going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back again. <laughs> was that funny? Did I, did I say that funny? Uh, episode 22. We got an uh, awesome episode in store. Probably, shit, the biggest episode we got so far. We got a, a legend on here with us. The usual resident homies, Casey, Joel, and Joseph with me. I am Anthony, and we brought on today an old friend, a fucking legend in the game, Mr. Trevor from fucking Black Dahlia Murder coming on the fucking Cali Death podcast. That's pretty fucking insane right now. Woo! Yeah, yeah. 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 Get, to the, get to this point. right. What's <laughs> up, dude? Yeah. I, it's like, it's, it's just like, to think about it real quick, I just want to just go on this just for a second is like the, how fast this has been rolling for us, you know? Like, I think it's only been like five months. And it's just so cool to see that that there's a lot enough people out there that that really want to hear this shit and have, have you know tune into these conversations that we're having with people that we just you know came across in our careers and we've crossed paths i mean dude i've seen fucking black dolly murder so many fucking times and i've seen him so many fucking times at the pound i think 2002 was the earliest i saw i you guys were supporting unhallowed when i first saw you at the pound nice i want to get into that a little bit more yeah 2003 2003 okay yeah yeah dude still fucking early yeah. as fuck Babies. for me dude right out of <laughs> high school for me literally and i was fucking blown away by it dude i literally that was one of those times i was telling casey about this yesterday it's one of those uh really really powerful moments where you you're introduced to a band that that hits you at the core for the first time in a live setting what that i think is the best way to be introduced to a band for the first time Oh, thank. Well, I'm flattered to hear that, man. And, you know, we've always prided ourselves on, on being a live band. And like at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. And like, I think what keeps us afloat the most, you know what I mean? Like trying to be omnipresent, be everywhere and play a zillion shows and, and be a good live band. And then a after we played a, a good show, then we will have fun. You know, the rest is kind of like bonus. Totally. But, but dude, yeah. the pound, like, I can't imagine what it would have been like to be a young kid, any one of you guys getting involved in the California death metal scene and like having that be your local scene where you're like, oh, yeah, just going to go see Deprecated. Oh, yeah, just going to go <laughs> see Deeds of Flesh, you know, like no big deal. Mm -hmm. Like, and uh, that must have been so fucking cool, man. I can't. I can't it imagine. really was, dude. It was a, a sanctuary to a lot of us. I use that word in a few different locations we talk about frequently on this show, but the sanctuary vibe is what I get from these places. And the pound is definitely key, key point in my formative metal years, you know, really getting to know what it's like to be in the, in a fucking tight, you know, small, fucking venue with everybody's energy it, the, you can't not catch that energy when you're in that vibe you know and and going every weekend too at that young age it's definitely the reason why i'm still sitting here fucking bringing it up on every single episode that we have so far you know <laughs> it's it's and and the black dolly murder was one of those key moments the key memories for me i don't were you guys touring with uh who were you touring with on that? Do you remember that? Uh, let's see. Um, Package. Our very first tour, we didn't come out to Cali. Like it was only East Coast shit. Our very the very first time I ever came out to Cali was with um, Azale dying and Every Time I Die, and they were flip flopping as a headliner. Mm -hmm. And it was like right when they both hit it really huge. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um. um like hot damn just came out and as dying was just like taking over the world too. And, uh, that was cool. That was the first time we ever got out to Cali. Then we, we did like King diamond and Nile that we played outside at the pound there on that one. I remember that, um, that Oh three lineup though. I'm trying to remember. Cause did you guys only are the only ones that I can remember from that night. I came home with a unhallowed CD and a matching t-shirt or some shit that night for sure um might have been can maybe cannibal that was a like early one you know when we played with severed savior which was fucking awesome um yeah dude i remember just like 
like hearing all the Cali bands on mp3.com back in the day when that was kind of like the mm -hmm. outlet, you know, before yep. MySpace, before like social media as we know it had popped off. And, you know, that was kind of like the platform we were using to try to get momentum to kind of show labels and crap like, well, we're, you know, we do good on mp3.com. But I remember hearing like the first couple Severed Savior songs put up there and like Decrepit Birth and like, yeah, we were, you know, we were all watching Cali hard <laughs> for oh, sure. Yeah. And it was like the golden era of brutal death metal. And you guys were like right at the heart of a, a lot of it. You know what I mean? And yeah, it had to be fucking exciting. But you probably didn't know how awesome you had it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's it is just like, how it works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you uh, go for I was going to, I was just going to say, but go for it, Joel. What were you going to say? I was just saying it's, I mean, you don't know what you had until it's gone kind of thing. Um, you know, it's like looking back Dang on it. God, probably. Motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not still, gone. It was like that the excitement back then with all the unique leader bands and, you know, you kind of especially the pound and stuff kind of forced me. I mean, there's no way I could not be a part of that. Like after seeing Cannibal there and stuff like that, I wanted to bring back a memory real quick, too. There was one time I was at Slim's and I think Unhallowed had just dropped and that must have just exploded because it came on and everyone it was in between songs. And everyone started looking at each other and like started talking about like what's this band like well, well like it became a huge like at Slim's this conversation and it had just come out like a week ago and I was like damn and it totally grabbed me too because I was all about at the gates all of the inflamed Swedish stuff but it had that still death metal vibe to it and how fast did that explode because it seems like that when that week that fucking thing came out it was on everyone's like everyone was talking about it you know. I think we got very lucky, man. I think it was just like the perfect time really for that to hit. And, um, you know, like we were influenced by, you know, at the gates in flames, um, soil work, mm -hmm. but you had a lot of those bands at that time had like done a, you, you know, like totally left the course to like go be more commercial you know what i mean so all our favorite melodic bands were like putting in these big like sung choruses and like mm -hmm. you know kind of like watering everything down and we got we were pissed we were like no fucking way like <laughs> let's put some real ass blast beats in this shit and like but um yeah i don't know dude i think it was just the right time and it was just like the perfect storm of weirdness you know what i mean like people looked at us and they thought we were our own roadies you know what i mean like at first because we just you know we didn't fit the bill of like what an extreme band looked like you know and and that's something that we dealt with a lot in the early years like the first yeah. time we went over to to europe we were on this super duper stacked lineup man um belfagor opened then us um vader finn troll napalm death marduk every day yeah. you know and yeah. um they were like the Europeans are blunt as fuck, you know, oh, like totally. I kind of like that about them. I hate it and I like it, you know, like at least they're not lying to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> so if they give you a compliment, it's real. And if they tell you it sucks, unfortunately, it's real, too. <laughs> and sometimes when they say it sucks, it's like a weird way of giving you a compliment in Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> They're always telling me, like, oh, I saw you before and uh, it was a sl slightly better that time. And um, <laughs> also, yeah. I think you have been holding too many sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah like i was saying um oh. like we kind of came out of nowhere and we were just such a weird misfit band like in our oh. mind we were like oh we're just a death metal band and you know we just want to go tour with origin and you know what i mean like we never saw any of this shit coming or like us being on an oz fest or sounds of the underground or mayhem or all that other crap because you know at the time you didn't see cannibal corpse in the parking lot you know what yeah. i mean like it wasn't like that yet that that whole like outdoor festival thing hadn't really like popped off yet and i just saw like yeah we'll just go play with some death metal bands and put out death metal records and and that's it you know but i didn't really see um how we weren't gonna fit in and then how that would become like advantageous like we have deathcore kids that like us and call us deathcore metalcore kids we have everybody and you know like wherever we go online there's like a 10 page genre fight to follow but that's honestly been like one of the best things you know i i, I there's so many different kinds of people that are into the span and when i look out in a crowd at one of our shows like it's a lot of different walks of people you know what i mean and um so like i don't know you know like uh, people have called this band so many different things you know like it's it'll always be death metal to me but yeah it's like i've lessened my grip on like i don't, I don't care what people think the band is like if they like it 
that's good enough for me. You know, what I, I think mean? The, like, the aesthetic probably got, I mean, though, because the way you guys looked versus how you sounded in the beginning, I think that's probably why you even got that metalcore thing. Cause you kind of, kind of looked a little bit more of the metalcore bill, but you sounded like the death metal, death thrash, death, melodic death metal bill. And I think that probably, like you said, it was like the perfect clash to kind of open you up and have a bunch of people from both sides it, go like, yeah, it's weird. Grab up, like put their claws into you. Uh huh. Some, sometimes people got put off right away. Like they look at us and be like, metalcore band you know what i mean like totally. or like the the name too like the name is kind of like a victim of late 90s early 2000s you know what i mean like yep. that that name where your name is a fucking sentence with the mm -hmm. opening it you know what i mean <laughs> like everyone was trying to be like super poetic and all that crap and like our early lyrics were very like emo metal you know like the fucking winter of my heart you know like all this shit <laughs> and, um, uh, when we first started like it was very metalcore you know what i mean like our main influence was uh prayer for cleansing it was the pre okay. Eke band mm -hmm. and um you know at that time you had um metal creeping into so many like facets of hardcore and stuff and um the Swedish sound was really taking off. You know what I mean? Like you started having banana riffs and, and, and metal core all over the place, you know, banana riffs, banana, na, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. um, so like you had on earth, you know, um, just like tons of bands and, uh, you know, we got signed and put out in the same ads as Unearth and as the dying who are, you know, very much metal core bands. And I think that we just got that helped lump us into it too. You know what I mean? But, um, totally. But Take us Oh, oh, sorry, if you're going to keep going, I was just going to say, take us back a little further. I want to know about Trevor in high school and stuff. And okay. <laughs> what, what got you got you even wanting to fucking pick up a microphone in the first place? Um, let's see. When I was super small, I saw this movie. It's a fucking cartoon movie. It's kind of like heavy metal, like that, like sci-fi, futuristic, a little bit racy kind of thing. But like mm -hmm. it was, a, it's called Rock and Rule. And it had like music by like Blondie and Lou Reed and all these other like and Iggy Pop and stuff. And it was like this sci-fi movie about this, these people that had been mutated like into animals. Like they had dog noses and cat faces and shit. And um, it was about this band. And like, you know, I, I caught my dad watching it. He was taping it from HBO, like when it was on or whatever, you know, like typical 80s shit. And I just thought, whoa, this is the sickest thing I've ever seen. I'm five, you know, like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I watched that every day and, you know, it had, I like recorded songs from it and stuff like on my little tape recorder and listened to it. And I used to play my guitar or my um, G.I. Joe airplane sideways as a fucking <laughs> nice. guitar, like a <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah. And then my dad was a rocker. You know what I mean? Like my, my parents were young. They smoked weed. They partied and um they, I had lots of aunts and uncles on both sides and like both, both sides of my family would like rage together basically. Hell yeah. So like early days was a lot of raging, a lot of guitars, a lot of Van Halen, a lot of Def Leppard and, um, but, uh, metal, let me see metal and punk. I pretty much came into about the first time and, um, about the same time rather, um, like, you know, you had your black album was, you know, everywhere coming out everywhere in 91 and i was like nine you know so yeah. like i knew that stuff i knew it was cool i liked it but it wasn't really until i heard megadeth the first day of sixth grade that like that blew my mind and that was the the moment where i was like yeah these black shirt people these are my people man these fucking weird people <laughs> that don't believe in god that you know aren't afraid to, to tell you they're jerking off like these people that don't give a fuck these are my people man you know like it's not sports it's not all this other stuff that i was trying to like fit myself into and you know unsuccessfully really and mm -hmm. um i was so like like having that like revelation about about religion was huge at the time you know i was only in seventh grade and it'd just be like okay i'm pretty sure all this shit's bullshit you know what i mean and i'm I just saw, gonna be an atheist. i had that i was sixth grade i think or fifth grade that i literally went to my parents and i was just like this makes no fucking sense to me and my parents were like you don't have to go to catechism anymore if you don't want to or ccd whatever the fuck they call because they, they put me in it for a little bit because my dad's parents are pretty religious 
were right. pretty religious. So they, you know, it's kind of like maybe how parents do it. They want to show their parents that, you know, we're, do, we're doing the right thing over here, you know? Right, it's right. Like it, it really was just like uh, another routine that they were putting me into. But at the, at, you know, I caught it pretty quick and I was just like, yeah, this isn't for me, you know? Like yeah, a moral my, my, daycare. my parents were always just like, you know, they never made us go to church. We went to church with like our friends, you know what I mean? We're mm-hmm. like, yo, this is weird. <laughs> Somebody died or something. <laughs> That's what I remember. Just yeah. like the songs and everybody knowing the songs and just kind of yeah. like how you, if you got thrown into a cult, what it would look like to you as a little kid, you know, yeah, I mean? yeah. like, as a, as a spectator, for sure. It kind of looks like that. Right. <laughs> um, So like, you know, seventh grade, like, meeting the metalheads and kind of, you know, being embraced by these fellow nerds. And, um, you know, you had Beavis and Butthead like popping off at the time. Like it was a really like metal time, you know what I mean? Like totally. metal was, was fucking everywhere. Um, yeah, it, it was fun, dude. And then, um, it started with, with the big four plus Pantera and Sepultura, you know, of course. And, uh, I was afraid of death metal at first. Like when I first heard Cannibal Corpse, uh, was at school like we had this little room where after you ate lunch if there was still time before the bell you could go to this room and they would play cds that you wanted to and the metalheads kind of like took that room over like we'd like mm-hmm. scare other kids out of there and shit like that because some of them were big some of the guys but um so i first heard cannibal corpse in there and i was like yo this sucks <laughs> 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 same yeah <laughs> <laughs> was it the and, vocals that was off-putting or was it yeah it was the vocals yeah. for sure i just remember hearing the vocals and just being like like yeah, is this what is this, what what like is this a joke <laughs> i haven't something? heard like, one what? word yet yeah exactly you know and um i don't know it's just just full full on was not ready for that you know and i remember another time where i heard death metal was um uh my friend had an older brother and he was kind of into a, the hardcore scene and punk and metal and like just a bit of everything cool, you know, and we used to go in his room when he was gone, steal his CDs and tapes and tape them, just like make a big compilation tape of be all kinds of weird stuff. You know, I heard Earth Crisis that way. Um, yeah, when I first heard them, I was like, I didn't know what Straight Edge was, but I, I picked up on that they were had a good message. I was like, I know they're good guys. I know that much. Like, <laughs> I thought they were Christian for a second. <laughs> was like, <laughs> like this firestorm stuff. What is all this stuff? I don't know. I know they're good guys. So, but uh, yeah, I heard them. Um, but one of the things he had was pungent stench. Um, been caught buttering. And, oh like, shit! To like have that gore cover. You know what I that mean? That cover and, is fucking gnarly, bro. It, it is, so dude. You me. know, it's yeah. It's still insane, and you know, it only took me thirty years of looking at it to not give a fuck anymore. But <laughs> you know, like at the time, especially for that. So let's first... let's give the audience a little backstory on that. If anybody has the information, I think it's the same dude, right? It's one guy sliced. Yeah, in half, his head is split. Yeah, and then um, they turn it to where he's making out with himself. Joel Peter Witkin, man, he's a fucked up dude. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> fucked up, bro. That's, that's like awesome. Some of the most. It's awesome as fuck. Like. To, if you think about it, like in the, you know, Jodorowsky sense of like, just going for it, dude, just being as fucking extreme with your art as you possibly can, you know? But I mean, obviously there's, there's gotta be a message. He didn't just say, you know what, dude, we're going to fucking solve this. Yeah. There's power. a lot of fucking like religious him. stuff in his, yeah. in his books and stuff like that. And, uh, but yeah, dude, that is some, that's a lot to process even that like there's somewhere you can use corpses for for art or whatever you want yeah. you know what i mean like even that is a lot to process and it's, um, it's the forgotten people that nobody give a fuck about dude the people yeah. who are left in their hundred year old graves that nobody wants to repay for it's it's those people that end up getting sold off to right. science and then fucking... yeah the john does out there yeah Shout out. Um, but just imagine dude like i'm i'm at the time you know Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, pungent stench. You know what I mean? Like it, it was like it, it scared the absolute fuck out of me, mm-hmm. dude. And like the, the song um Shrunken Mummified Bitch, you know, like I was just like <laughs> I didn't get the the, the tongue in cheek aspect of like of yeah. like yeah, we're being as extreme as we can, like fucking annoy everybody, you know what I mean? <laughs> like just be totally <laughs> idiots. Mm-hmm. And um 
but yeah so i was like i was scared like i was like yo this is like straight up contraband you know what i mean <laughs> like so i didn't tape that one i remember just being like nah <laughs> so so yeah Good. first exposure to death metal i was not having it man but um i was reading hit parader which was terrible you know but like i there wasn't like I didn't know about metal maniacs yet or any kind of good magazines and you know I'm in like suburban Michigan it's not like the epicenter of everything cool or anything you know so mm-hmm. information would trickle in very slowly about what was cool but um so I was reading through hit parader and there was this article about Pearson within it was brand new and it was like um you know suffocation death um uh, a couple other bands are the only good death metal bands left Death metal is pretty much over here in 1995, <laughs> but this suffocation record is really cool. So, you know, the artwork especially really drew me in and I, I bought it. Um, I remember listening to it for the first time and just being like, any feelings I had about going to hell, like kind of came back right then. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is definitely some go to hell shit. So <laughs> <laughs> better, you know, <laughs> better like just go with it man but uh i remember thinking like the music was so twisted compared to like your normal you know shit you listen to straight forward four four whatever like it was so bizarre i remember thinking like how am i ever gonna remember any of this (laughs) you know what i mean like it just seemed like a labyrinth you know and um (laughs) it's still my favorite death metal album ever um being set up like a labyrinth like that you know it's like the i think that's the whole i mean one of the biggest reasons why we always keep going back to it because it it, it's fresh it's an oh i don't remember this turn oh yeah this turn dude dude, there's so much stuff in it and you know i think that's like at the heart of a lot of of cali's brand of brutal death metal too you know like there's a lot of that kind of labyrinth of riffs you know just like a stream of consciousness of riffs but just coming at you and like that's what i really like about that shit like get high as fuck listen to discord and like try to hear everything you know what i mean like just yeah. try to like get in there and uh yeah it's fucking sick man it's but, almost uh, like i look at it like a david lynch film dude i mean i i fucking say lynch as much as much as the pound probably maybe not on this podcast but dude like twin peaks season three i go back to, i'm on my sixth consecutive fucking watch and i still am finding new shit every time you know and it's the same thing with all these other good pieces of art whether it be music or anything else like a sick crazy painting you get up there and you're like i don't remember that aspect all these times that i've looked at this painting i don't remember that little fucking thing right there you know and that's why we keep going back to it and that's why i fucking we're talking about it again you know uh you know it's just like very rich like textured and rich and like there's just so much information to process like you almost can't get it all in one try you mm-hmm. know what i mean totally. so like that's kind of like the appeal. great too yeah the that's sound the... of that record is fucking oh yeah that was a big like you know like that might be the scott burns production i think you know like that's mm-hmm. the one like that was like the crown jewel you know and like especially like bouncing back them after breeding the spawn sounded like it was recorded up a butthole you know like that (laughs) like i've tried to i mean i like the record because it's them you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like the parts you can make out are cool but like it's so fucking frustrating man like yeah leave that to the norwegian black metal to have their shitty recordings dude let suffocation (laughs) always be fucking pure and and right (laughs) Like the um, just spawned from like a bunch of ADHD kids, ADHD kids getting into suffocation or something, probably. Right? So like, yeah, is that probably the mixture? Is, dude. It's <laughs> before <laughs> ADHD became a thing. Like all the kids that yeah. turned ADHD into ADHD, dude. You guys are making me realize that it has been a while that I've listened to Pierce from Within, dude. So I'm getting I'm getting antsy for it now. It's come up twice. Uh, Trevor, what's your favorite song? Or how about moment, like riff or something? Oh, man, what's the first one that comes to mind? For me, it's always like. Thrones of Blood, that's man. In, that's not Thrones of Blood. Jinx. I'm actually talking Wait. about tr- what's track four called? That long one, the epic. It's not invoking. Is it suspended in tribulation? Is that the one? Oh, no, it's oh, before suspended. Oh, okay. Let me see. Uh, 
They're all, all right. every riff is like that on that album. I guess though. I didn't sing it. I just didn't sing it very. Uh, it's it's all about the drumming, dude. Like, Doug yeah. was my favorite Suffo drummer. Like, he's just the choices he makes. Like, they're just so atypical for Brutal Death. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> lots of like cool hi hat stuff. Lots of clothes hi hat stuff. Like all kinds of just really inventive shit. And uh, um, you know, it's a shame he's only on that record. And like, but. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be we, on one record ever like fuck. No, fuck. we had the pleasure of meeting <laughs> him we had the pleasure of meeting him right in uh jersey when we were on tour and uh cool dude it, it was He's like hey i'm doug bone i played on pierce someone in <laughs> that's what he pretty much did yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's that time where you're like oh my god dude i'm still i'm in the same room as the guy who drummed on that fucking album even though i'm with the rest of suffo too but i'm like yo he's here too you know, I like, thought it was his, I thought it was their buddy. I thought it was like just their buddy hanging out. And he's all in Casey's all no, he was a drummer on Pierce. I'm like, oh fuck, I need to and I'm shaking now. I, need, like, I, I <laughs> ran I ran into uh, Doug Cerrito and Chris, the bass player that was on Pierce, like at the uh a venue out here, and I definitely punished them like to the high power. Like I <laughs> I terminated those guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck yeah so so ba- well let's get back to it basically so i heard that suffo record and it scared the fuck out of me but it like blew this whole world of death metal open you know and it was it was 95 and in a way the um hit parader album was right because like death metal had had that huge rise and fall and it was kind of like on the fall then you know like i'd missed it essentially like all the good stuff and um so like i didn't even see it uh the first band i saw in death metal was cannibal corpse and that was 96 like right when they got a vial out and they had george and shit and um but yeah dude like death metal was really rare here like there were some scattered bands but i didn't know about them you know what i mean and like we could only find really the hardcore scene so you know uh we would have shows like where the early uh Willow tit bands would be on the bill, you know what I mean? Circle of Dead Children and Sadist mm. Euphoria, and Fuck, like, yeah. they were cool bands. It was it was sick. Uh, commit suicide. Um, Electro but, uh, quarter staff. I don't know. Yeah, that. yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and um, so you know there were shows with bands that like you know had some death metal chops and shit that we would play with, and uh, we had Saprogenic was our local brutal sick. death metal. Band. I mean, they're amazing. Uh, so we were very lucky. I saw their first show. I've seen them play like a, a hundred million they, times. They, yeah, they they blew me away. They were one of those bands that I didn't even know anything about and then going to Maryland Death Fest and them playing and seeing that little dude up on stage just fucking gurgling the whole motherfucking time. I was like, dude, these guys... Uh, he, he had these cool, like dude. mid-range reeds. They weren't like super low. And they are kind of like high and it was like really weird. Like He was a different. standout vocalist when I heard him. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, dude, yeah, this guy's got something different going on. That first demo is fucking disgusting, man. Like that's my favorite thing they ever did. Hell yeah. It's like a bit more trashy sounding than the than the full lengths and like it's got like a little bit of gore grind flavor at times just because it's so like messy, you know what I mean? But I, I remember seeing their first show and being like, fuck. People we know can play br- brutal death metal. Like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and they they but were you Michigan guys, cats too. They're yeah, yeah, they yeah, they were Michigan dudes. Um, but and they all came from like you know hardcore and metalcore bands and stuff. And they're like, yo, we all love death metal. Let's like, let's do it. Let's you know. And uh, yeah, I just remember seeing that first show. They had the demo ready at the first show, which is you know smart. Like, don't play until you're good. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. uh, so many bands make that mistake i've made that mistake with every band i've ever been in you know what i mean like <laughs> you're so excited to get out there and play that you'll just you know you don't know you don't know how to edit yourself yet or anything like that <laughs> but um yeah sapergenic was great um super awesome band uh we had like exploding zombies but they are kind of like more old school death um you know we had repulsion from flint that's kind of like our the cool thing about Michigan that we have. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, it, you know, like I'm from like 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes from Flint. Um, that makes it sound like it would be scary where I grew up, but it's not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just like typical <laughs> suburban sprawl, you know what I mean? 
and um fuck dude when i when i was in high school i was one of three people that like death metal at my school or something like that like it was really like weird you know did you have really any bands weird. going on? well obviously yeah if there's only three just fake people, ones can... man just yeah. fake ones dude like <laughs> what's, I, your, I, what's the name of your first fake band can you remember uh, dude it was necrolust Necro and, uh, and then you know i used to just like write these like crazy ass lyrics and like be like yo if my mom finds this shit i'm done you know like, <laughs> mine was and, malachi uh, from fucking yeah children of the <laughs> children born, children dude <laughs> i almost said children, scary, bro. <laughs> children of the dead because you were just talking about circle of dead children but yeah <laughs> children of the corn dude um there was a local uh kind of metalcore band here called malachi that was really sick yeah um okay. i just thought that name would sound super cool you know yeah dude malachi yeah. It still does Fuck and yeah. malachi's scary bro he's scary he is scary you guys need <laughs> to re-up dude if you don't want to jump in on this joel Casey, you guys remember Children of the Corn at all? All right, dude. it's been I, I haven't seen it for like twenty years. I'm dude, if you've seen behind. any of the other ones aside from the first one, like holy crap, they're all so shot. I just know it's it gets on that that album Issues by Corn, right? Sorry, I'm yeah, just man. <laughs> you know an ice cube on it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I the last while, like the last year maybe a year and a half i have been like deep diving old new metal shit yeah like, i've done that, I've gone I, that got, I both had our our run with that for sure like <laughs> yeah. i got in like you know on the on the corn record um i stayed for life is peachy and then pretty much right after that it was like all death metal all the time just me in my bowl cut you know being too cool i'm only a few years everything. behind you so my last one was the fall fall of the leader album my last one was the issues and then oh, I wait no was that like... one i do i do remember listening to that one too but that was my parting and then sepultura album. basically someone showed me sepultura and then i got a sepultura windbreaker we just had with like what? chaos id just came out or it's probably out forever but uh that the, finally I, pushed me the... over yeah, you know, I was fucking rocking it, dude. It was fucking shit was falling off and everything. Like I rocked it like every day. My sepulcher yeah. thing From it smelled what, like your shit. Bro had it or something? Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. I I just straight up bought it off. Uh, what was that fucking one of those? You know, Rockabilia. Mer- Rockabilia, something oh, like that man. website. You know, it's been like seventy bucks oh, on it, probably. Man. I know. Just or grape. What was that? What was the grape. other grape? Blue grape. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Overpaying for fucking windbreakers because in Santa Cruz windbreakers were the shit. Like if you had a windbreaker, like everyone had like the, the Santa the Cruz world, ones. In they, the world, it was the shit for a while. Yeah, well, like independent skateboards or like you know all those yeah. kind of like windbreakers. Yeah, see, were windbreakers like, in Cali, that's some, some year round shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> totally. Like, yeah, we're in the summer. <laughs> we're in the winter. Like here, yeah. like not so much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm thinking of yeah, I'm totally thinking of the Cali. Like, so what's the most extreme it gets for you in your area in winter, Trevor? Um, it's not as bad here in New York as like it was in Michigan. Like it's Michigan is like 10 degrees colder pretty much. Oh, so you're in New York right now. You're yeah. New- I've, okay. I've been out here in Brooklyn for like three years. Okay. Nice. Living with Rochelle. Oh, what up? Rochelle? Yeah, yeah, she's here I somewhere. Her. I heard her. <laughs> yeah. I heard oh, her. Yeah. So what's a Michelin? What's a Michelin? What I'm got <laughs> fucking work on my mind, dude. What's a, what's a Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> michigan winter like ah it's gnarly dude deep snow um everybody from michigan knows how to drive in the snow because it's like you have to um yeah lots of i don't know man it's cold wind it's Welcome gnarly wind breaker dude it breaks 10 degrees down. worse 10 yeah. degrees worse than here in new york so yeah yeah but you now global warming you know like it barely snowed here at all this year or last year you know True. so who knows what's going on? But um, yeah, yeah. So rooting for school, it. School, man. School. <laughs> here, here, I guided it back in the out of the into the weeds. All right. So we we were at uh, fucking Sepultura. When where were we at with Sepultura? Oh yeah, windbreak. Windbreak, and we were breaking wind, <laughs> and we're talking about like making the transition towards being cool, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean we basically no, we were back at we were back at the new metal thing. So towards corn, a better chance of being cool, dude. So corn right, like so. issues came out, and I like remember I, I like stood in line at Sam Goody to buy it. I know I was like excited to get it, and I was still like not sold on the Pantera Sepultura 
Uh, and I had I had a suffocation tape. I had an effigy of the forgotten tape that my brother gave me that I would just show friends to you know scare the shit out of them. And be like, yeah, I'm I'm into harder stuff than you. Pretty much check this yeah. out. It's like that's what, <laughs> I was like that's pretty much what I used it for. I didn't use it for like listening on my own. Like I you know the vocals. My um, my brother was always around listening to death metal. My dad's a musician, and he would hear it and be like, this shit sucks. He'd like be like whispering that in my ear all the time. And yeah, he'd just be like, this shit's like the fucking Your dad's vocals. Dad's a jazz like, bass player, isn't he? Uh, he's like a blues rock blues. bass player. Okay, sorry. But like, yeah, he was like making fun of it. So he kind of brought me on the bandwagon with that. And uh, slowly, I think, yeah, and I would download, like I remember Napster came around and get uh, DSI'd and, and just to scare friends is all it was for. Like I was still, I didn't like it. Like what Trevor was saying, I, I still like the vocals were kind of just like, eh, but it scared me. Like it was, the Glenn Benton scares me still probably a little bit. But uh, like he actually like was the, the catalyst of me going like okay and then finally that song kill the christian by deicide like i finally could find the groove to it i could finally deal with the vocals and i kind of like got out of the like slowly got out of the slayer pantera phase with that with that album well that's a that's a good place to start though like uh you know once upon the cross is very straightforward it's very totally. catchy it has like big choruses yep. easy to understand the vocals you know lots like, of head banging i get it lots i get it you know? yep and morbid angel gateways that was like, yeah, okay, I'm in. That was like the and the can't live cannibalism, just the, the VHS tape. I had live cannibalism. I'd watch it just to kind of, you know, be uncomfortable at and <laughs> like wouldn't I wouldn't be like <laughs> stoked on it. And then actually the very end from skin to liquid came on the uh, the credits that the instrumental and that that was like when I was in. I was like, okay, I get this shit now. Like I got it. And yeah, that's that that's when it took it from like kind of like showing my friends to act tough to like i'm gonna only buy this now mm-hmm. from now on this is it <laughs> like yeah you're that's actually how locked I was. In. it's not it wasn't you you weren't doing it for a reason other than actually you were in love with it it's like it, we've been talking about earlier you get this download of information that you don't even realize you're getting when we have those first moments with those records yeah we didn't even realize it but we were getting like new software uploaded into us and then <laughs> now that we have that software on the next listen we we're able to understand the data that's coming in more better and that you know it's like more upgrades and upgrades until you're finally like fucking shredding psyopus and you're like oh yeah dude this is <laughs> <laughs> you wake up one day and you have 10 fingers on one hand <laughs> <laughs> And you're in, and you're in the fucking exploiting dysfunction album cover. You're like, yeah, I'm actually inside it, dude. That's oh funny. man, dude, meeting those guys for the first time was a real trip. Um, they were yeah. like one of the early bands that we'd run run into, um, you know, going and playing around, and they'd like put us up at their at their houses and everything, and they were a trip, man. You know, totally. <laughs> fun dudes. They're fun, and uh, yeah. Their shows were wild as fuck. You never knew what was going to happen. They were always had like a kind of tongue in cheek aspect to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, dude, that was cool. I remember like the early shows, like going around and playing in New York and you'd have like Mortician's distro there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I remember yeah. trading BDM uh, CDs to distros for death other death metal bands and stuff like that and good times man good did times we'll, did we'll have his uh signed portraits for 20 dollars set up at of that course time. and he definitely didn't have a t-shirt on yep <laughs> holding the fucking <laughs> axe or some shit dude. <laughs> but um That's, yeah cephalic is classic for for taking bands in through denver they've did that with decrepit odious you know like show up and leonard's got like literally 17 cases of beer to try to fit in our fucking in our trailer and shit he's it's all like these half empty like a uh, breckenridge brewery like, <laughs> yeah. like things and he's just told oh you gotta take it man it's they're, they're a bunch of like you know they're 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 bad ones but they're they're it's got good beer in it so just take them and just <laughs> would stack our fucking trailer with them like every time and just smoke us out and you know so, say all kinds uh, of random shit yeah oh dude that's the thing leonard dropped science man there's nobody yeah. like that dude for totally. sure he used to call me and bart treble and bass and so he's a funny man um so what's um what's odious life like do you guys like practice even any do you guys or what casey you take over (laughs) no we wrote a new album because you know we're home and so yeah 
We got it done. Yeah, but like, is the writing process like just y you guys separate, like sitting with Pro Tools or? Oh yeah, but let's like basically just writing it on like Guitar Pro and stuff like that, right, right. sending it back and forth, and then you know. Uh, but and we Casey's got 10 songs. taken over. Yeah, Casey yeah. took over basically a bunch of like we have this like kind of dump file of all these ideas and shit, and then he just basically through quarantine just wrote like because he's you know a music teacher, he's like getting better and better at composing smarter and, all the time yeah yeah he's, he's got the new <laughs> firmware on that and he is yeah. writing some insane shit and just like he's it was basically like a fucking i want to say it was like a two-month process for casey he was just like okay i think album's done i'm like what the fuck yeah. like, casey just went well, like to town on it and you I know mean, i was like locked down i couldn't really do much so i was like yeah just, just got into oh, it oh that's yeah. cool dude it's been really yeah. hard for me to like do fucking anything man i'm like yeah it's like paralyzed man it's fucking sucks well you're sitting yeah. you're doing a bunch of uh like guest spots and stuff right you're... uh well I, it's been a while like those just kind of trickled out like later on you know what i mean most of them i did before the uh okay the, um pandemic or whatever but i have a lot like sitting on my plate right now i need to get back to singing like i stopped when i got hernia surgery like oh shit eight weeks ago or something like that uh two hernias so uh, Damn. i couldn't like strained to sing anymore you know like when you, you oh, get hernia yeah. surgery it's like the first day when you wake up like you can't even sit up like it's like your whole core is fucking destroyed like you did twenty thousand sit-ups or something Jesus. <laughs> so yeah i've just been like i made rochelle lift anything that, that had any weight whatsoever she's been like my weird like lifting slave <laughs> 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 but now i'm feeling better now i'm ready oh, yeah. to get back it i got like a, a few um guest vocals that are patiently waiting on me you know the one i was super stoked on was um because they had they like they hinted at it and i was like it was theory and practice because that's like been one of my favorite bands for a long time oh, fuck yeah and they're like we got a, a secret singer coming on and they like had like your shadow on there and i was like is that true no way. i can't tell really? one like well that was like oh. well that was 2017 or something or 16 uh, yeah or 17, i remember 18. when they did that that was yeah. insane uh to like get a have them get a hold of me and um colonizing the sun like oh fuck, it's one of my favorite albums yeah a totally. lot of that record dude yeah, yeah. nobody yeah. knows about that band man that's like, still probably the most days. underground technical death metal band like that i can think of like oh, them and like the how many years how many years have we been saying that too it's been the same like that's always been that band is like the uh, the super underground fucking quality that just nobody catches mm. dude it's like I, I i don't know but totally you know at least we got to experience we get to experience it and have had experience with it because it's a fucking killer record dude oh yeah i, you know, I feel kind of like that about um Caffernum too you know Sukov oh yeah oh, and oh, like yeah. that record was so huge and like isn't he facing on that yeah yeah i used to know hefe yeah. as the Caffernum singer <laughs> oh, and then i then i got the first trivium record when he put it out and i was like yeah this is okay I'll stick with Caffernum. <laughs> dude is crotch it? duster is one of those things that i've been like yes. kind of trying to get like you know a GoFundMe or something for jason to get on i'm just like dude, i don't think he like kind of entertains it and jokes around a little bit but i don't think he's ever how do you think yeah. the content his content would uh be received now in 2021 dude uh, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a yeah exactly the climate of things is so different now you know what i mean everybody is mm. so like sensitive now like yeah um like look at any comedian dude like being a comedian is not the same thing as it was 15 years ago you know what i mean yeah it's yeah like ball game now so you know maybe crotch duster just couldn't exist in this world as we know it you know what <laughs> I, mean? I mean really it's like that that could be uh, that's perfectly fine with me to say that that's just one of those blip masterpieces that just needs to be standalone and just leave it there and just have fun with it whenever you want you know because that fucking album rips dude i i have a journey with that album every time i it's the cover <laughs> yeah, it's, it's i so am great. that dude who's flying what what the I roller coaster yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. like on skis or some shit <laughs> oh yeah the cover yeah oh man oh, fuck. that's a good one fuck yeah yeah no i need to have, i mean caffron are they hinting at getting something i, was, I don't know i was hearing something about that no he uh, you know like when I've been out there recording with BDM or whatever, it's been several years now since we recorded there, but we'd always make him play these like supposed Caffernum songs that he was going to finish someday or something. They were awesome as fuck, of course, but um, 
yeah i don't know dude he's just so busy like producing stuff and his brother was the drummer um and his brother's like off making rap beats and shit and has a lot of success with that um but like dude like they recorded that shit basically live, man. Like him and his brother, like those versions of the songs with totally different fills and stuff, like where you know just different takes and shit. It was a guitar and, player uh, martyr, right? With it? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah, he was on that too. Yeah, and the, because... the bass player was from... Dan Mongrain. Dan, Dan Mongrain. Uh, yeah, Mongrain, and uh, the bass player I think was a monstrosity dude. Or I don't know. It's been a second that... since I thought about this, but yeah. dude, when that record came out, like you know, on Hollow was already out and um but it had a big impact on us you know what i mean like just a lot of the technical chops and uh um same with the first arsis record you know when that came out too that like really blew our blew our hair back and we were like yo these guys are kindred spirits you know what i mean yeah yeah (laughs) and we didn't know that we'd go on to like poach all these arsis members (laughs) (laughs) a a black dahlia farm league exactly kind (laughs) of yeah it's like the the monstrosity (laughs) to uh cannibal corpse yeah 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 totally right there right yeah but you know jim's cool he's he doesn't have any bad blood with us you know what i mean yeah um he you know he's gotten his shit together last time i saw him he looked great he was doing great so that's right i always wanted the world for arsis man i thought they were so fucking awesome but they just had too many like dropped tours and too many flubs you know what i mean yags yep bad luck dude just bad luck man like uh, dude, diamond for disease man that's probably one of my favorite like i don't even it's know it's a little ep right? yeah that's yeah, like song, that long song, song ep Fuck. Sick, <laughs> yeah no um, dude i i agree that that early willow tip shit dude, i mean uh who else was no that was the they reissued necro necro yeah the, but I, we had the the necrophagist record like before it was on willow tip i remember finding Os- it like, what was it I like think... osmosis solutions or some shit yeah some, some weird record. ass like yeah. one-off german label or with that shit. zombie or the mummy on the cover yeah uh-huh. the cover art was shot but the yeah. old logo was fire <laughs> <I remember> the, <laughs> the, the first time i saw the new necrophagist logo with like the man or whatever i was like I was pissed. I was like, flip the table piss. I was like, what? What is this? I'm not even going to wear that shirt. <laughs> Got a gingerbread man on, in the logo. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and that yeah. old logo was nasty, dude. But, um, totally. Yeah. Like, I, I, basically, with Corey Grady, he was the first drummer in BDM. And um, he was like the internet savvy one where he had cable a cable modem before the rest of us. He was on IRC. He was on like DC plus plus and all these other mm-hmm. like um, file trading things. And every time we go over there, he'd be like, all right, here's the 10 sickest things I heard this week. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yep. it was always all this fire ass shit, man. Like human mincer and, you know, severed savior. Like I said, like as those, uh, early and you don't feel as bad cause you're not the one downloading it. You're like oh, a homie's down. He's just exposing me to, it. Oh dude, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I still download the fuck out of everything, but I also buy the fuck out of everything. So there you yeah. go. If, if you're yeah. going to be a Spotify guy and pretend that you're giving bands money through Spotify, totally. Like, no, totally. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's why you I don't. go right ahead. I'm not and, a Spotify guy, dude. I'm really not. I'm a band <clears throat> guy. I think it's like a hundred thousand. It's a hundred thousand. It's a hundred thousand dollars per hundred and twenty million listens or something, right? That's what I heard. Something like that. I don't they know. Dude, like, and and to be honest, Ian, and I'm not saying I'm not trying to sound like a fucking pretentious asshole, but like a lot of the shit that I like, I go on Spotify. It's not on there, so I'm like, I'm not gonna buy uh, the yeah, service, dude, you know? For like real niche listeners, like you know, brutal death metal and the underground and stuff, like it's never gonna have a status like. It's not going to have everything, you know, but I'm not not, when I'm not even digging for that. I dig for much other uh, a lot of other shit, too. I like brutal death metal still to me is like kind of a lower on the list for me. I I am getting back into it because of this podcast. Now, I had a time where I was pretty non death metal, you know, just with what I was listening. I I understand, dude. I mean, I, I like all kinds of shit. The older I get, the more I open up to even more kinds of music um the last few years i've been listening to tons of like 80s pop lots of funk lots of soul lots of r&b um you know metal is just like uh, is 
just a part of my diet you know what i mean mm-hmm. like i have to listen to other shit or i'll go fucking crazy right. but right. there was that yeah. time when i was just getting into death metal and like i was too cool for pantera all of a sudden too cool for anything but like dude i got rid of all of my rap cds i did i was like i'm going full on into this going full on bro i'm gonna sleep <laughs> oh, in yeah. the coffin man <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally yeah <laughs> well, I, th- I think it's important to take breaks and stuff and like you know, like just get into some other music for a while, you know, get, get back into punk, get, get back into other stuff and kind of come back, you know? Yeah. It's and, just uh, like loop through back yeah. through time that I keep doing, you know? I remember uh, like when I was living up in the Bay area and I had this girlfriend and she was living with me and I, I, I went through this phase where like, like we were having karaoke parties and I was like, you know, Janet Jackson's actually pretty rad, dude. And I like, I got super into it. Like I was like, it's like nasty, all the songs and like, you know, the <laughs> rhythm nation. And I was like blasting it. And she just kept looking at me like, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We would rage to, the, rules, we would man, rage to that shit. shit dude. Yeah. Awesome. Karaoke it's, was it's good shit at the daily yeah. apartment, dude. Yeah. Staple love, of every Casey I love Howard wham, party. guys. Really oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wham. Yeah. <laughs> Wham's my shit. <laughs> dude. Um, Last Christmas. Yeah. No, it, no, go for uh wait. What's the no, it's the fucking the, the sax, man. The dude, one. you know, oh, you know yeah. the song. Careless What's whisper, the fucking dude. song? Oh yeah. Yes, dude. Oh, dude, totally. <laughs> and I'll be honest, dude, I got I re I I had a resurgence with that song after Jeremiah Watkins played that shit all the time on Kill Tony podcast, the Kill Tony podcast. I don't know if you guys ever listen to Kill Tony podcast, Tony Hinchcliffe and Brian Redband from the Joe Rogan podcast, they have a live shit where a live podcast where comedians can do a minute and then they get critique. It's kind of like a, an American Idol thing, but they have a live band that plays shit too. And there's a comedian who also plays sax and dude that he would drop careless whisper, like at the most random spots. And it's, it, it was like, I need to go back and listen to the song. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, dude, this is a fucking jam, bro. That's why he wants to keep playing it. Cause like, you never want to stop listening <laughs> to it. Yeah. <laughs> is that the one that has the mashup, the Slayer mashup with Seasons of the Abyss? I don't know. You heard that one? Uh uh-uh. uh. I think they mashed it up. Someone. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, what's going on in here? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little careless, careless whisper. <laughs> trying uh, me trying to be a fucking saxophone. We we have derailed to the point of the train is off the tracks. Completely <laughs> solved. Uh, also, somebody take weed. I got the sax right here. Do you want to a lot of music? What, you what was that, it? Trevor? Smoking you weed got the opened sax? my door to a lot of music when I started smoking weed. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, like that. Really, like I started to like, like. Oh yeah, you know I'm gonna listen to this pop music because it has cool production. You know what I mean? Or like, yeah, so totally. You get into different stuff and food too. Like I was really like one of those like, I only eat cheeseburgers, man. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> super Midwestern. Like, <laughs> so wh- when <laughs> no did you culture. start? When did you start puffing herb, dude? Um, it wasn't for a couple of years into the band. Um, so like mid two thousands. Uh, heavy after the first record, but before the second. Um, I remember the day we were on tour with King Diamond, but our tour man, our, our booking agent at the time, was like, "Hey man, um, Damage Plan is playing these shows, and you should play open those shows, and then jump back on the King Diamond thing." And we're like, "I don't know about that, but okay, we'll take your word for it." Um, but uh, yeah, I remember like the shows were not great. Um, we ended up like seeing saliva and a uh, drowning pool and all kinds of weird <laughs> shit that we didn't belong with. But I remember like being like 10 beers deep or something and being like, guys, it's time. Take me to the trailer. And they knew exactly <laughs> what I, that meant. <laughs> and uh, they couldn't believe it at the time. Like, oh my God, this is what we've been praying for. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But they like kept it real cool. Like they didn't like blow up the spot and like make me embarrassed about it. You know, which I mean? is the way they should have done it. Come here, buddy. Come on in here. And I remember getting the spins and being like, don't worry, guys, I'll try it again. <laughs> <laughs> I still use a term that you when we were on tour together you like we were outside like wait like super early to a venue and you were just like walking around with like your hands on your belly i'm like what's up trevor how you doing man you're all i'm as high as an old wizard right now man what's going on (laughs) i still use that term today 
I as an old wizard. Buddy. I want it. I want to start using it now myself. Dude. <laughs> no, that was so classic. And, and another fucking story. I remember it was uh, when you guys so graciously took to grab it on that tour. We were fucking rookie. Had no nothing under our fucking our belts tour wise besides like a a bloodletting or something. And all of a sudden we're on this tour where it's just like, and I jumped in like two or three weeks before, and they're like to learn all the songs. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Fuck it. And then you're like, uh, I think you contacted one of the other band members and was like, dude, this this tour is like almost like sold out already because it was like nocturnal, the nocturnal tour. And uh, I'm just sitting there going like, all right, let's fucking do it. Whatever. I need to I need to get my chops in. I need to fucking get learn this like tour fucking schedule. And uh, you guys brought me in the back. It was the second show at the uh, Fillmore TLA in Philadelphia. And um, I, we smoked like just there was just a pound of weed back there. And we smoked, you know, like an insane amount. And I smoked a lot back then, but I was like anxiety ridden stoned. And, um, and I'm sitting there and I, I have no idea of time where the fuck I was. And then cold and one, hot at the same time. <laughs> so one of the uh, one of the managers comes in. He's a stall. Hey, decrepit, you guys are on in fifteen minutes. And I was like, shut the fuck. I was like sitting there, just like, oh no, <laughs> like oh no. <laughs> like, I was like, it's fine. And I was like, whatever, it's, fi- it's probably fine. I'll just peek my head through the curtain. And I peeked my head, and it's just fucking. <laughs> It's just a sea. <laughs> people, sea of people. It's a, it's a sea of, <laughs> waiting of for Joel to come out. <laughs> <laughs> and then on top of that, on top of that, I'm like, okay, finally get my, like, take a shot. Like, try to get, like, back to my, my, my wits about me. And uh, there was this fucking spotlight that was following me around. Like, like, it was like. <laughs> While you're getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like moving on stage. I was like, I was playing. I was like moving around. The spotlight was like following me around. And I was like, dude, can you, there's like a singer that has like dreadlocks. It's like he's homeless. Can you call him? Like, what the fuck? Like, why are you, why are you looking at me? Luckily, it blinded me from seeing anything but the third row. But, um, and after, I remember another mistake I made that night was, uh, uh, Hate Eternal played. I probably told the story, but, um he like uh gets off stage and i did the it was the when you learn not to say good set if you haven't watched her set um i was like eric gets off stage eric rutan and i'm like that was a sick set he's all i broke a string my mother's in the front row well and just like listed everything that went wrong and i'm just stoned as fuck <laughs> and you're like and i'm just like sorry like, oh sorry man uh the last song i saw was good it was, i it was liked like, it <laughs> <laughs> like, from then on i was like okay that's the you just shut up and watch the set or else not say anything well, speak, <laughs> speaking of rookies on that tour, oh, my God. it was me and Joel oh, backstage. Oh. Oh. Damn, look at that chin strap, dog. <laughs> fucking holding it together right there. Is that's that, the that's game that the Joel I in the in the room at Slims, or where is that? I, I think know. that might be uh, that's you know, Galaxy. Actually, that, that might be no, that might be the Palladium, no, sh- dude. Showcase Theater. Okay, it, it looks kind of Palladium esque. Looks Palladium y. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that oh, was, uh, it was that, it's a mystery. There was an I optical remember, illusion. It looked like that couch like bowed down. Like, yeah, I remember yeah. watching uh, you guys like uh, for the first few times, you know, like coming out and watching you guys play and just be like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome, man. Um, oh, thanks, man. You know, there's so many brutal death metal bands that like don't have good tones, don't know anything about equipment don't have their live situation dialed in you know what i mean and like just like to cry by birth is a band that is totally insanely pro even back then you know what i mean so dude the rochester show was the first show uh, i remember that on that tour and uh we all pulled up there just basically to meet you guys we had not met you yet and uh we yeah, loading yeah. in just like super nervous and we got to do the sound check because we were the first band and um you guys decided we finally get our shit together you know toms are all good everything's good and it's like all of Black Dahlia Murder like this, standing in the middle of the fucking the floor. <laughs> and and I have just joined this band two or three weeks ago. And I'm just sitting there just like, God damn. And I remember, I just remember, I remember you standing there. I remember Brian with his dark cane sweatshirt on. I remember like, and, and Shannon and, all, and I was sitting there just like, and you guys were like, all right, good, good. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and I was well, like, dude, I was we like, were massive fans. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, getting you guys on that uh, tour was was huge and i thought you know like the lineup was great too it was you know yep. diverse three inches was on there that's right. eternal yep. um that was a blast dude like that era of the band like was probably the greatest time i had in this whole ride like between that tour and the, the summer slaughter that we had lined the first one that we did with like 
Cryptopsy, Vader, um, yep. Psychroptic, Spies to Icon, mm -hmm. Whitechapel. Like, it was stacked as fuck. You know, we were at the top of that, and that was like, you know, boss I'm with fucking Nocturnal. You know, it was like, wow, this is yeah. insane. So, when you watch the Majesty DVD, like the first thing that we DVD we did, like, it's right in that time. Like, and you see how much fucking fun we're having and like we're yep. getting trashed atomically trashed <laughs> and I, that was kind of like what cemented our party reputation you know what i mean was like those dvds but they're really just a reel of all the good times kind of smashed together you know what yeah. i mean like no man is partying 24 7 the most of the part of being in the <laughs> of being in a band is like intolerable boredom <laughs> yeah yeah I mean? like so much fucking waiting around like Anybody that's left this band got sick of waiting around pretty much. <laughs> like, this, pretty much is it. Yeah. You know, like, um, like we've always, Brian and I, when we got signed, we like made a pact. Basically we're like, yo, let's, let's go as hard as we possibly fucking can and not, you know, squander this opportunity. So anybody that's coming to the band, they know there's no saying no. There's no like, oh, I can't do that tour because I have this other thing in my life. Like, no, no, yeah, you yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, so it's like, it's an intense commitment. It's, you know, like I, I get it. I get why people have changed priorities and wanted to leave because it's not glamorous, man. It's a lot of camping, dude. <laughs> pre, <laughs> you know, pre pandemic, what was the average uh, tour, like the amount of months you guys would do? um it's like we're nowhere near as as intense as we used to be uh like at the height of of our touring we would do fuck we did like 10 months in a year once fuck, now dude. it's more like six because like uh we're a little older like now there's actually you know people anticipating us to come to town so we can kind of rely on that mm -hmm. but back then it was like we would do three u.s tours right in a row and then go home you know what i mean like um end one then drive to the beginning of another and just trying to like, get on the map at all just like trying to like start anything basically and uh, so do you ever feel grounded even when you're at home during that time really you, i don't think you could right well you get with the, the sense of being at home but like the fully feeling rooted in anything right like. yeah but you know i was so excited to like leave my life and like i still lived at home with my parents in the beginning you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, they were very you know kind and like obviously we weren't making a lot of money um yeah. the beginning you know you're just paying to go on tour almost and it's kind of like just what you have to go through and you just hope that you survive that that era and have a killer start time making some it. scratch yeah. you know but um that was the most fun part of the whole thing was just like initially getting out there and playing yeah. out of town and like meeting someone that had your ep that you didn't know who the fuck they were you know what i mean mm -hmm. like we couldn't get any love at home man like we played we were just a local band for three years uh we weren't the cool guys in the scene um and uh i don't know we just had aspirations like yo let's just skip this part and just get out like nobody's nobody's ever gone pro from being a cool local band you know what i mean like it doesn't work <laughs> yeah. that doesn't work that way so we thought like all right well like when i joined the band the biggest selling point i think on me personally was like yo guys i want to be a real band and get signed and like let's make demos and get that out to labels and you know like i brought that kind of angle with me like and i think they saw how serious i was and um i had been like a dumb metalcore band where i played guitar before that it was kind of like a morning again influenced kind of thing and um i had a, a, a kind of like small taste of like an ill-fated tour but it was still enough to make me want to really do it you know what i mean yeah mm -hmm. a lot of like the motivation to get out was from the black flag um get in the van book and um i used to be like i mean i'm still big into rollins and stuff but like as a kid like 15 around there like he was like my fucking god basically so he used to like listen to his spoken words and fucking dig hard on rollins man and um you know black flag and stuff and you know just learning about the diy aspects of early punk and like how black flag kind of laid the uh the tour 
map that we all still take you know what i mean across the mm-hmm. u.s and like did everything themselves and had their own label and did their fl- own flyers and so um i really liked all that stuff i liked all the grunt work of being in a band and like doing that kind of shit you know what i mean but like my high school band was terrible that i was in like we were just terrible i was trying to play guitar and sing and um i wanted to be good without having to do any work basically you know what i mean (laughs) so i wasn't ready to commit to like lessons or like really diving into it so we just like were like a shitty three chord punk band pretty much but i remember like i loved metal and it was my dream to like be in a band with like actual good musicians and shit and when i ran into black dahlia murder like even in the demo days like they could play guitar way beyond what i could you know what i mean like they were younger than me too i was like fuck these guys man what's up with these dudes yeah and um i like i was playing guitar in bands but i always like was kind of like the controlling dude that like i'd write the lyrics still for the, the singer because he was like lazy or whatever or or you know in different stuff in different bands you know what i mean um so I had experience singing rough, you know, sort of like I knew how to like write lyrics and patterns and stuff like that. So do you have a poetry or writing background before that? Um, not necessarily. Amateur, but I, just like do it but, on your own, whatever. Yeah, But I always gravitated towards English in school. Like that was the only thing that kind of came naturally to me really. And, um, but like during school and like when I was actually doing it, I fucking hated it. I thought, Mm -hmm. you know, like I didn't want to read fucking Shakespeare. I hate this shit, you know, but now I realize how, how Shakespearean, like the language I use with Black Dolly Murder is, you know, it's all this like thine, you know, powdered wig shit, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, so it definitely like left a stamp and, you know, I think it's cool as fuck now, but uh, when I was a kid, I was like, fuck this. (laughs) But, um, yeah, I just remember like, um, the sixth song for Black Dahlia Murder was the first song with like real BDM lyrics, like, you know, murder and blood and guts and like full on death metal shit. And I remember like uh, there was this kid, it was um, the singer of Saprogenic's brother, actually. He, Ian, he came out to me, he's like, Yeah, man, you guys are getting really good. You know, I think you got to stop singing about girls and all this emo shit, man. You need some like dragons and shit, some like metal, metal shit. And I was like, I hear you, man. I hear you. So <laughs> I duly went, noted. Yeah, duly I went noted. And wrote the Blackest Incarnation, <laughs> which was our sixth song, and um, th- that was pretty much the the first song that anyone like the earliest song that anyone has heard from the band, aside from like really old demos. You know, like that was the earliest song that would be on on Hollowed was was um, Blackest Incarnation. I remember like writing the whole thing at my computer in my underwear still doing that pretty much every time <laughs> like the same exact approach as i always have uh, i remember like playing it f- with winamp back in the day oh, shit. But, <laughs> what was but, your skin um, bro you want to share your skin bro yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um i just remember like writing it and being like yeah this is really fun and you know like putting like, sort of a poetic twist on death metal stuff like uh a lot of death metal records I had like had English as a second language. You know what I mean? Like there's <laughs> mm-hmm. like, like tons of them. And like the, the themes of the lyrics were cool, but like, just like it wasn't fully fleshed out in terms of language mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So like, I don't know. I just kind of like uh, th- this one grave album in particular though, um, uh, hating life. Like people hate on that record, but it's sick. It's kind of like their Wolverine blues, where they went kind of like rock a little bit. But lyrically, it had these necrophilia songs, but they weren't just like stick your dick in a cold one, brother. Like it was like, <laughs> like I love this person and they're dead, but are they dead? Like uh, you know, like I think I'm gonna dig like, them up because I love them. You know, like, yeah, like, it's like maybe, like, yeah, it's like one of those like maybe if I fuck them, they'll come back to life. Yeah, maybe if I just shoot it really far in there, really <laughs> big nasty one. <laughs> no i can see the light like the the like uh they're trying to tie it an emotional aspect into it like you could <laughs> no you can't never mind <laughs> but yeah like that grave album like it kind of came back when i was writing 
the early black early black dahlia lyrics you know like the next song was close casket requiem which was like stalking and kind of like you know so it just clicked i guess at that moment you know and um i don't know i, just, I still enjoy writing for the band a lot it's a it's a challenge to have a hundred songs you know what i mean yeah, and just dude. and like i write so many lyrics per song like i i've learned to shut up a little bit more on the last few records you know like allow a little bit more space for like riffs to come through and like shit like that because my instinct with bdm is just to like be a motor mouth because it never the music never stops mm -hmm. it's always yeah. like forward propelled propulse like there's never like a backbeat there's never like you know like, there'll, there'll be breakdowns or like switch ups and stuff but it, it never fucking stops so i, I, I was felt just thinking about this. <laughs> I, I was thinking about this concept right now if i were to able to climb inside your head right now and figure out <laughs> which one of those hundred songs is the one you remember the least out of all the hundred like what the one that, that that you probably have played the least in all the tours? Uh, I mean, there are songs that we just straight up haven't even played together ever. You know what I mean? Like they went from the demo phase of Pro Tools to being recorded by each person in the studio. And they came out good, but we had never played the songs together. Like That's kind of like the modern era era of going to the studio you know what i mean it's a yeah. little bit different than how we started doing things but um yeah we're we're forced to like learn pro tools after the second record because we couldn't find a drummer and we had to be writing material so we thought like fuck we just got bart in the band and he was pretty studio savvy so he's like guys we're gonna teach you pro tools and we're gonna work on the record and we're going to find a drummer and go from there. And like, that was a really big light bulb moment though. When like we started writing with pro tools and, and Brian would kind of like write in isolation, you know, um, just the songs became way more detailed, way more fleshed out. It was different than the five of us in a room playing all different songs at the same time. Or like, you know how it is when you're trying to write with an entire band at the same, mm -hmm. you know, like at practice or whatever. Um, but fuck man, um, I was asking about Odious Mortem and what you guys do because I wanted you to say that you practice all the time because I wanted to be, <laughs> I wanted to be jealous of that because <laughs> fuck I haven't like had a band with regular band practice in so fucking long and I miss that so hard I miss like yeah. the camaraderie kind of like shooting the shit with your buddies and um you know, and like the biggest aspect of one of the biggest aspects that I miss from those, the this era that we're talking about, the, you know, the early to mid 2000s was our weekly or even bi weekly jam sessions where I would drive down from, you know, Pacifica, take me an hour and 10 minutes to get to Santa Cruz and yeah. stop at the furniture dumb everybody get together we all pile into cars head down a little bit further to watsonville to the fucking uh the storage lot where animosity was fucking at decrepit birth was that we used to use all these fucking storage units dude and we nobody was in that fucking place dude we ran that fucking place at night <laughs> like we would That's be, awesome we would be pissing all over things fucking drinking <laughs> beers throwing bottles at each other fucking uh, you know, that playing sounds, death that metal. sounds perfect honestly it, it, yeah it's exactly <laughs> it's exactly what you would want at that time a uh, uh, enough freedom to just fucking just go nuts dude and and be creative and and have that camaraderie together and i don't even know why i got on, how did i get on this well i love like back in those days too we would like if you fucked up it was like funny like if you messed up like a part yeah like we everyone would just would... look at each other and start laughing it would be like wouldn't be like what the fuck are you doing and be like <laughs> you like you fucking totally <laughs> fucked that up dude. That was, <laughs> what were you doing right there <laughs> I, and like, I don't want to brag because it, it, it would be like there wouldn't be more than one or two of those before we'd get it after that. So there wouldn't be the like, come on, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Because it's just like never. It would, it, would, it would. Yeah, it would end up if, if we made a mistake, we would catch it on the next time through. That's what yeah, it yeah. was, you know, and, and doing it with you guys is fucking some of the best fucking shit 
And I think that like, this is one of the reasons why I like doing this podcast is because I can take myself back in time and talk about those times again. Cause I fucking loved being in those moments so much like in the jam room, everybody's in that fucking element. Just like, I, I I feel like a broken record. I probably say this fucking every episode. <laughs> well, <now. laughs> well I, I'm doing the, the, the live rehearsals right now with, with dreamer. And, uh, it's been so fun just having a fucking practice room again. I loaded my three rack drum yeah. set, finally set up. And, uh, we have like a friend bringing or a bandmate brings his friend who just is like coming just to hang out and like, just kick it. And then we like, have been exploring long beach, like all the restaurants that are like five minutes away. And like, it's just been a total yeah, blast. Dude, you're you're yeah. the closest to what we're talking. You're well, in it right now. I'm, I'm in Look, that right now. It's been we, fucking yeah. amazing. Yeah. We jammed last week with Diego and doing that. Yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's what I was saying too. So, oh, that's at, sick, dude. At, at this brewery that my friend owns. Diego, Diego. Oh, we love Diego. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. So we just did like improv metal stuff, you know? Um, and then uh, they jammed their Discord's tunes and TVV, whatever. And yeah. uh, so it, it did. That was the first jam we did of the year. I mean, since like I don't know what, like last September, whatever it was. What's the yeah. status with Discord or to violently vomit? Like, what Joseph, is going on? You can, I uh, never fucking know what's going on. Yeah. Someone just tell me. <laughs> we were we were we were scheduled for a couple East Coast festivals, summer 2020, and we were also booking uh, an Asia tour, and then Corona. And now uh, we're just waiting for all those events to be rescheduled. Um, we we're going to do Las Vegas uh, Sin City Slaughter Fest or whatever it's called. Uh, that that got pushed back too. But yeah, basically it's me and Diego. We know the set. And then we're hoping to have AJ with us still. And uh, Diego Sori on bass. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're pretty much, you know, still in touch with all the promoters and everything. So like, is, and, and is then in, there a record? Did that ever like... I remember like it was named, there was fucking art. Oh, yeah. Like so years ago. For the yeah, that that stuff, yeah. Um I think Ricky's a bit busy and uh he's kinda there there's been some behind the scenes talks about the, the Discord name and, and who who's who's entitled to its use and stuff. So I'm not gonna get into the anything because I don't know the who, who word, what word. what to say, but uh basically we're there there's some cool discord merch that we have our hands on which is you know we'll see what happens with it but yeah uh and then diego and i are writing some new to violently vomit material good so, good that's what yeah. i want to hear new dude diego's new stuff is like sloomy like he's also playing bass in um cephalotripsy uh and writing nice. for them too but have you uh, ever been to uh indonesia with those guys no i mean um no, I haven't. <laughs> you would love, but to, I bet though. you've heard this heard stories. I mean, like they get treated like the Beatles there, dude. Like they have to move hotel rooms and shit like that. Move hotels. Diego people, like... for president of Indonesia. Dude. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> easy, yeah. dude. Yeah, he he kind of told us about it on his episode here. Yeah. He's like, yeah, Michael it's, Jackson it's insane, over there. You know, I think it's like, um, well, you have Discord influencing Jassad, and Jassad's like their biggest brutal death band, like kind of mm -hmm. like their, their legendary them. band, and they're very much Discord influence, you know. Mm -hmm. So they churn out like Discord clone after Discord clone. I like them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, we had Travis Ryan on last week, and and he he was like, "What's going on with Indonesia and death metal?" And I was, we were both like, "We don't know, but maybe you actually would be the guy to ask if you know more about the scene out there and how it kind of got out there in the first place." I don't really know how it popped off so extremely. Like the only like lines I can really draw is like, you know, Discord having a big influence on Jasad and. Um, but like you see pictures now of I've seen this picture of this gang of kids all leaning on their bikes, like their BMX bikes, and they have these two X brutal death shirts, like all bright colored as fuck, all, all these slam shirts. And there's like ten kids and they're like ages seven to eleven. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah, posing dude. like <laughs> You're like i'm like this is the sickest shit i've ever seen in my life like that's what we're trying to figure out like how did it spread out there like i remember talking about that on the last episode now that you said that joseph like yeah like how did it spread you know like there has there is this process to eventually 
get out there set the plant the seed and then let it flourish dude and it fucking flourished you know yeah that's it's an open question as far as i know like i don't know who would who would know the answer but i'm I'm interested i think he's getting closer with the with the jasad act though too yeah yeah. it's it's very like suff you know down the suffo pipe of like i mean most brutal death is really like you Mm -hmm. can argue that like they're at the heart definitely filtered through suffo for sure right but like the drumming that is so prominent over in Indonesian death metal is that kind of like shuffly suffo blast. You know what I mean? Like that's like, yeah, like a trademark over there, but like, yeah, dude, I don't know. I'd love to, I, you know, like see a documentary about like disgorge or to violently vomit going over <laughs> to, to Indonesia and, you know, like, Show Cali people death, what, what it's Cali like. Death Productions. Like, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. That's a, after the book, dude. After all your success from your book, Joseph, we'll take that. <laughs> we'll we'll fund a documentary with that money. If and, we could and... get someone from Vice to to follow us, as oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 There, there you go, dude. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even Banger or something. Just something like. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, dude. It'd know? be awesome. Like people don't don't understand how like crazy death metal pandemonium oh. is over there, and like. A place where disgorge is treated like the gods they are. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You know it what is, I mean? Yeah. Like that's amazing. Sure. That's so fucking cool. They're seeing, <laughs> yeah, they're seeing the way we see them, but in a, like a mass scale to where it becomes something like they're waiting for you on the fucking tarmac at the airport. Dude, they yeah. they are, man. Like fucking, they have to move hotels because so many people show up trying to get to disgorge like that's so <laughs> fucking crazy that's the craziest shit i've ever heard yeah it's awesome have you been out there uh yeah we've been out there a few times the very first time was the biggest like you know there had been all these years of anticipation and shit and we played at the top of this like all day festival um and there were like f- fuck dude ten thousand people there Jesus. or something like that um and uh, we were playing on a really, really tall stage with really bright burning ass lights on the most fucked up equipment you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> like a three color, no brand drums, drum set with like no bottom heads. And we're trying to trigger that thing, you know, <laughs> like, like shit. It was stressful as fuck. And I thought we sounded like shit, but like they were really stoked to see us. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but like the show itself i remember being really really frustrating but um just getting a glimpse of their scene is really cool and you know like uh some of the other prominent bands you have like uh burger kill which i imagine was probably meant to be like dead meat or something you know what i mean but like just uh, (laughs) didn't quite hit that one you know Um, that's better yeah that way yeah (laughs) brain ass brain ass dude (laughs) brain ass is the shit man um yeah, there's just all kinds of funny, like, broken English shit. Brain ass sounds like they're trying to translate butthead. Yeah, right? I don't know. I don't know what they were going for with brain ass, but they're, they're, they're fucking sick, man. But one of the most important things I did was, like, let my guard down to, like, bands with broken English and shit. You know what I mean? Like, I used to, like, kind of be harsh on that, you know? But it's like, I don't give a fuck if your band's called Reek of Shits. But, like, if you're awesome, like, who cares? You know, you know one more language than I fucking do. It's Dude, like... I speak English, and my first demo was called Increments of Defecation, <laughs> which is not the correct way to say that so what's my fucking excuse dude oh that's so good i love it i love it uh um, but yeah dude that scene is insane dude there's a documentary on the the scene over there would be fucking wild vice should definitely get on that shit right i mean dude i'm we've said it several times but it is a fucking fact that the president of that country is also a metal fan as well oh, he's dude, been there's that picture of him like in the middle of the crowd at a show with a napalm death shirt on <laughs> and the entire fucking building is looking at him. You know what Jesus. I mean? Like every person in the whole big ass show is just like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, dude. It really is fucking amazing. It, it's, it's like, I'm, I'm glad that there is one little fucking pocket on this planet that sees what we see, you know? <laughs> Oh, dude, that's the best part. It's like a, a fantasy land. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's so like far removed from 
a brutal death metal band coming to your midwestern town and playing in front of like 25 people you know what yeah. i mean oh, <laughs> like, yeah. it's like oh it's wild <laughs> i love i love that there's some like some some chicks out there playing too like the the female death metal is super sick out there and i the I'm drummers i've seen some female drummers post yeah. some videos or, or not them i've just seen it through videos of media. them yeah there's definitely fucking chicks that shred dude yeah there probably are more indonesian death metal female musicians than there are american female death metal musicians i i i, I probably guarantee that man holy shit you know they mm-hmm. just it's like just popping off over there it's insane Joseph, I, we haven't even talked about one or said one question. We probably got tons of questions. Is you, there any questions? You actually helped. You, you already kind of answered a few. One of them uh, was was I I was gone for him. Sorry. I no, 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 no. That's good that we we bring them up explicitly. Yeah. Thanks for the questions, dudes. Um, someone said favorite genre of music outside of rock and metal, and I think you kind of did answer that, Trevor. So that's why I was like kind of letting it roll. Um, here's a good question. Um, so prefacing this i was just hanging out at band practice my two friends bandmates they said that they for a while they talked exclusively via quotes from the majesty dvd when they were (laughs) younger it's like yeah they just quoted from that all the time but he says what happened to the bong that you guys received oh sad sad story Mm. i knew it was gonna be sad Yeah. yeah it's been gone for a long long time um we went on tour and we got kicked out of our practice space while we were gone. And um, like the woman that was running the place and taking everybody's rent money, like was not paying for the building at all, basically. So she got like shut down and they were like, Hey, come get your stuff. We're like, dude, we're like in Nebraska. That's not happening. You know, we're like you better put our shit in storage or this is going to be a problem. Uh, and when we got back, we got all the equipment out of storage and did not realize that there was a no bong there mm. until it was, you know, just over and done. But uh, yeah, that sucked. That thing was probably uh, like an $800 bong. It was, it was the most intense like bong I've ever partaken of for sure. <laughs> Damn. But it's sad, dude. Like, but that was so long ago now that like, it's like a sick guitar getting stolen. <laughs> 800 bucks, you know? Maybe not. Our very yeah. first show ever out of town, uh, Brian got one of his guitars stolen. Oh, uh, damn. Mm. Yeah, it was in D.C. And uh, like a few years later, a kid like gave him a tip and he ended up finding who took it. No Like this shit. kid was like, I helped my friend steal your guitar uh, on this day. Um you know, we hid it in this other room while this you guys like were years packing la- up. This was years later? Yeah, yeah. So he, was, he sat this... with that guilt that whole I guess so. Time, I dude. guess it was eating him up, man, because yeah. he just came out of nowhere and confessed, and we ended up, like, chasing the guitar down and getting it back, and... Um, Did yeah, they fuck it, it up, or was it in... No, no, it actually had some um, work done on it and was uh, even oh. better than we had <laughs> they left got, it. They, got a, <laughs> they gave it a tune-up, and he got it back. <laughs> that's funny that's amazing um another question was just uh i don't know if this is too off topic but favorite venues in new york city um i really liked brooklyn bazaar they just closed that unfortunately i guess vitus like you know is kind of like is it it's like the epicenter um it sounds great the bar is cool the book the people that book there know what's up they have like like I a part of why I moved out here, you know, was Rochelle, of course, but also to be where there's an actual scene, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like if bands are coming over to play Maryland Death Fest from Europe and they're gonna play one show, where's it gonna be? It'll be at that place. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be in New York, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like like the scene here is so rich, it's gotta be comparable to, to Cali in that way. Like there's so many bands, so many different styles and um but yeah, Vitus is is it. Uh, what else we got around here? Kingsland. Kingsland's okay. Um, Brooklyn Steel's nice. That's a really big place. It's a very nice venue though. Um, I saw a quicksand there. That was tight. What's that larger venue out there? Ah, fuck, we played there a few times uh, with Summer Slaughter and stuff. Uh, um, and... Gramercy, oh, like... maybe. Gramercy. Gramercy. Well, Gramercy. Yeah, Gramercy yeah, Hall's yeah. cool. I like that spot. Uh, <clears throat> I saw 
Deicide was the last thing I saw there. That was pretty fun. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, lots of great venues out here. Just an, an awesome scene. Um, I'm still trying to see all these great bands that come from here that like I've been on tour during, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Imperial Triumphant, for example. Mm. I want to see really bad. Uh, those dude, guys are fucking uh, awesome. I rocked their shirt on a previous episode. I think I've mentioned them in a podcast, dude. They're fucking... They're one of my favorites in the last two years of me like getting back into digging on music. And I, I don't find nearly as many gems as I used to, but that's one of the gems. Yeah, there's, Alpha, there's Alphaville not, is one of the gems, dude. There's not that much stuff that coming out that feels new. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of like every avenue has been channeled. So to like hear something like Alphaville and have it sound so fresh, it's like, fuck man you know what i mean like you have like the dude and, from mr bongle producing it you know? yeah and kenny the drummer he uh he's in a ton of zorn projects too john zorn projects like mo- i would say at least a handful of zorn bands he has drummed on multiple records for them too and and when you listen to imperial triumph and you understand that he definitely has a jazz oh route. yeah there's a lot of jazz and you know it's kind of like despel omega goes fucking jazz you know mm-hmm. what i mean like it's it's wild it's, it's high high art dude it's fucking it's sick yeah dude so, and you're right there with them they're in, i know they're, they're right here <laughs> i <laughs> they're see right there. i see the singer dude at shows i've talked to him a couple times and stuff yeah. but like i've never seen them play um sanguine eagle was another one but the guy from sanguine eagle um died recently that really sucks um r.i.p uh yellow eyes is fucking awesome if you like black metal um yeah there's tons of great shit ruin lust if you like the war metal shit um all kinds of stuff man it's it's fun dude it's really fun to be here and and like have shows to go to and um it's fun to not be in michigan and to not see the same people (laughs) i've seen since i was a little kid brooklyn's kind of artsy right now they've they've kind of moved it's, into that style it's definitely getting gentrified more and more every day yeah. and i guess i'm i'm part of the problem i guess you know coming to bed and where bed was once like you only heard about it in rap songs and it was like scary you know what i mean <laughs> but now it's just, like in coffee shops everywhere and you know same thing that's, that's happening in cali and everywhere else but um uh yeah i love it out here man i kind of feel like i came out here a little bit too late like I'm not partying. Like I, I haven't been drinking even for the last like several months and I, I think I'm done, but like to come out here, like at 21 or something would have been, yeah. huge. you know what I mean? When I had the, the, the steam to like drink my face off and stay up, like the, the bars go to four here, man, you know? So talk yeah, about like wild, potential dude. for getting in trouble. Holy shit. <laughs> So, like, I kind of feel like I missed my ultimate window of opportunity out here, you know what I mean, to really have the full-on, like, insane New York experience, but I do enjoy it out here. It's been it's been. What's the weed situation? How? how... Oh, dude, it's going to be legalized, like, next week. Sick. Can't believe it's not. I know, dude. I can't. We were talking about this earlier about, like, it should have been done around the same time as you guys or, like, Denver. You know what I mean? Like, this place is that progressive, you know what I mean? Jersey's like, already legal, right? Yeah, I, th- I think. Yeah, I think Jersey's so. Like legal. a lot of the bordering states are, and um, yeah, it's just really fucking weird that it hasn't happened. Like it's been pretty much decriminalized. Like everyone knows it's not a big deal here, you know what I mean? But like to like officially have it be legal and like have dispensaries and stuff is going to be like. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be killer. Cool. Yeah. Look forward to it. Do you I mean, watch? Look, a, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, Joe. I was gonna say, like, you were talking about how you stopped drinking and stuff, and 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 all that stuff. Um, the Majesty DVD. I remember I was on the bus with you. It was me, you, and Carrie on on the back of the bus with the Shoreline show, or not Shoreline, uh, uh, Fillmore. And um, I remember us just fucking raging. We were <laughs> we were we were, <laughs> raging. We were, we were fucking <laughs> to- like like all the smoke, all the drinks. 
and stuff. And I'm just sitting there, just going like, dude, I am like uncomfortably fucked up, and I do this all the time. This is like not okay. And then you stood up, you're like, all right, well, I gotta go on in five. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I remember oh, I was man. like, dude, I can't, be- I couldn't believe. I remember talking to Carrie. I'm like, I have no fucking clue how he stumbled his ass on stage. And we we saw you play, and you fucking just like nothing ever happened. And I was like, oh, dude, like getting drunk is game. unfortunately been a part of it. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> oh, gee, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember that. that, dude. A- okay, now I just got reminded of some shit, Trev. I know we're <laughs> fanboying fanboying out right now, but dude seeing your tattoo just totally reminded me i went to a halloween party and i drew heartburn on my stomach and i went shirtless dude and i got some fucking (laughs) glasses i got the fucking wig a brown wig because i was bald at the time you know i fucking went as trevor dude oh (laughs) dude you don't have a picture of that i gotta hit up dan kenny our mutual friend dan kenny if he has the if he has the photo i you know i I should have fucking hit him up before. Because <laughs> oh, so if he, if anybody has a picture of it, it's him, dude. And I, it was at his house, and I totally was like, you know what, fuck it, dude. I'm being Trevor from Black Valley. Murder, <laughs> and I fucking showed up shirtless in fucking Pacifica. It wasn't. It's Halloween, dude. It's fucking October. It's not fucking hot, dude. So I was showing up with fucking hard nips, but I was like, dude, <laughs> check out my heartburn, dude. <laughs> Uh, dude, that's so sick. I'm I'm flattered. <laughs> that's so fucking good. Are you totally, st- are you still dude. taking heap uh, spoonfuls of uh of baking soda when you get that heartburn? I remember you were telling me like you'd get spoonfuls and like. Um, just... yeah, that's it. if it's like real bad. And I'm out of roids <laughs> and shit, you know. But like, I ha- I still haven't won the battle. Like, yeah, <laughs> oh, I still get it. I still get it all the time. Um, What's the number one food? What's the number one food? My favorite food or the food? No, that I was going to say the food heartburn. that gives you the food that gave you made you realize you needed that tattoo. The number uh, one dude, food that gives the you the worst heartburn, heartburn is by far Little Caesars hot and ready. <laughs> <laughs> like that is a special kind of heartburn that's like magma. Like it's it's. What if you found out there was like an additive in there that's in no other pizzas and that's the? Exact I wouldn't thing doubt it. I really wouldn't. <laughs> But uh, yeah, dude, there's no, there's no heartburn like fucking hot and ready heartburn like that is some, some shit. And uh, man, I remember like, too. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna just get hot and ready right above it. I remember when I could, I could read my own tattoo. That was cool. <laughs> hey, quarantine's a lot of fun. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of. Oh lot of yeah, coming out of the, the woodwork. <laughs> Uh, dude, when I, I like after my surgery for the hernias, I couldn't like do anything basically. Oh, shit. So I just sat around rotting and like I put on a few for sure, man. <laughs> so yeah, like now yeah. I'm back to working out, which is good because uh, stopping like my brain was sad, you know, like, yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. good for your mental, you know, to like mm. do some shit like that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 40 in a couple months here. So basically like a few hangovers happened during this during uh quarantine where i was like this is too much yeah like with the state of the world and everything and uh just you know it was just like too too much man so Mm -hmm. i'll get hung over the first day i'm like physically hurting the second day is like the mental i want to apologize for my entire life (laughs) isn't that crazy it's well it's it's the it's we're getting older and it, we can't produce as much serotonin as we used to. So we blow it all out on the partying. And then the next day, our body's like trying to catch up with the fucking dopamine and serotonin. We got nothing. So it's just like, oh, dude, I'm a fucking piece of shit. Dude. Yeah. So you, you're in that mindset. <laughs> plus the fucking world's burning around us right now. So like, yeah. it was just too fucking much. You know what I mean? So and like I just. The last few tours, man, just drinking 10 drinks a day yeah. for 30 days at totally. 39 years old, it's it's fun at first. You and you can I mean? do it the whole time. You do it the whole time. Like going on vacation too. Like I could drink 10 days in a row, that same 10 drinks, and just you, you do it the whole time and you're fucking great. And then as soon as it all stops is when it all comes crashing, dude. Oh, for sure. You know, and just getting to the point where it's like, you know, I want to keep this band going. I want this band to still be able to perform like 
as, like a young man should, you know, like be very technical and not, not have to like puss out because we're getting old, you know? And um, I just can't, can't drink like that and be sustainable for 30 days in a row. Totally. Like by the end of it, like I don't even want to drink anymore, but I just have to, to like make the whole thing go. So yeah, that's, a, that's another weird feeling, dude, is when you're like, I, you're drinking and you know, you're just like, this is bad, dude, but you can't stop because you're just like, fuck, I've been doing it for the last 30 days. Right. And, like, and I'm like, over as fuck. I got to get back on stage. I got to be smiling exactly. when I'm up there. So, you like, wanna bum the kids out. Like, got to turn up the time. drink even more three, three totally. quarters of the way through the tour. You're putting down some serious fucking whiskey, man. So, and, um, we have a couple guys that, uh, don't drink anymore. Brandon doesn't, Max doesn't. So, you know, I'm just gonna chill with those guys and let Brian do his thing. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Brian and Alan <laughs> definitely are still crunksters for sure. Totally. But um, yeah, dude, I just want to still be around. I want to still be doing this, and you know, like people are so hard on you, man. Even if you're a death metal man for how you look, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, so I've I I don't want to look like a fat bloated alcoholic dude you know what i mean like that's i don't know that's kind of that's kind of in right now i mean you look at like burt kreischer <laughs> look at burt kreischer that stand -up comedian. he gets up there with his big beer belly takes his fucking shirt off and the whole crowd goes yeah because they like seeing his belly they're like fuck yeah that's fucking yeah. part of the well I, I did that i did that already <laughs> he <know>? definitely did <laughs> that he's <laughs> like i've been doing it I, i've seen him do it like 17 times at the pound dude. which yeah, by yeah. the way real quick i wanted to uh talk about one specific show hawaiian shirts beach balls dude you okay, know what i'm yeah. talking about dude yeah, that yeah, night huh? was a yep. fucking riot at the pound dude everybody was on like turn everybody was turned up to 11 dude as soon as you guys came out in your fucking shorts and hawaiian shirts and everybody was throwing beach balls in the crowd dude that place went almost as wild as i've ever seen that place go dude the energy uh, that, that was you guys awesome brought, it really was, dude. Like that tour was awesome. I remember people climbing like up on the walls and shit. People oh, were like standing <laughs> on tables, fucking like nobody had control of that place when you guys went on that night, dude. It was, it was with PBM, dude. Yep, yep. That tour was great, dude. It was into the moat opening. Um, oh my god, Cephalic Carnage, BT. Listen to this. Uh, Listen to this lineup, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it was insane, dude. Um that was a really fun tour. Uh, it was our first full on headliner. You know what I mean? And to see, well, that we were that lucky in assembling a lineup was huge. Like that was one of the rare tours where the first bands we asked said, yes, like, it, <laughs> like now any black Dahlia tour you see is plan Z, you know what yeah. I mean? Like by the time the fucking poster is made with the bands on it, it's, it doesn't resemble at all. But, original tour that we, yeah exactly you know it's so hard like the money aspects the ego aspects like people don't know what goes in to like being a band behind the scenes and like the kind of power struggle and stuff like that you know what i mean it goes along with that kind of thing and it's not like some kids are even like why don't you guys tour with megadeth i'm like yeah sure let me just call Me the megadeth hotline <laughs> you know like like wow what planet are you on man? that's one thing about you guys is i mean that's been brought up probably on every single interview you've ever done in your life is that you've brought out so many fucking cool bands just because you guys were into them and and you and no people really got to even hear these bands um it's the cannibal aesthetic like alex exactly. bringing out all the you know he, tons of cali bands went on cal cannibal tours you know was it was it was it your when you guys went with cannibal was severed on that tour as uh, well? yeah severed Shaver Shaver? was on that tour that was uh, the our first tour with cannibal out of like we've done like, and cephalic nothing. correct no no that was with uh, deeds cephalic. sorry sorry um but um yeah where are we going what was I going oh about? we were talking about black dahlia bringing out bands that you actually okay yeah yeah are fans of you know, like you know? uh it it we try to do a bit of everything you know like there was a moment where we had to like realize that some people that like our band like other music that we don't care for, 
You know what I mean? Like, or see us as a totally different band than we do. You know what I mean? Like, so like we'll do deathcore bills. We'll play with metalcore bands. We'll play with all different kinds of bands to try to please our fans, not like all different kinds of shit. But when, when I have it my way is when we do like a more death metal lineup or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like try to put a, a younger band on or a band that we just think is cool. And like, um, I don't know, like that just brings me a lot of pleasure, you know, like, uh, I, I love giving back to the scene and, you know, like I was doing that, um, thing over at metal injection for a couple of years there, uh, the yep. obituarist where I would show off bands all the time. And like, it's become like part of what I'm known for now, which is really cool. So, you know, like having a pedestal with all these eyes on us and we're able to like affect things at least a little bit, like by bringing out certain bands or raising awareness for cer certain bands or whatever like that. And it's just my my pleasure honestly you know to like and that we see that in so, so cool. many people that we've in, either looked up to or actually like have been in contact with like the severed dudes and the decrepit dudes they're only a few years older than us but you know they kind of already had a footing and and they they recognize certain people not only are they fans of their music but they want to actually like you know, shepherd them in, like severed definitely shepherded my first band carnivorous into the scene. You know, they basically grabbed our hands and fucking said, no, here you guys go. That's awesome. You know? you know, like that's what you got to do, man. Like uh, there are some bands that are so uptight. They wouldn't recommend another band to you no matter what, because they're so afraid of losing their own fan to another band. Like that's no fucking way to think. You know, I'm all about like success for everybody in the underground mm -hmm. and having a rich scene with all different kinds of sounds and like helping each other out and realizing like this is against the grain music here, man. We need all the fucking help we can get. Mm -hmm. You know what I totally. mean? Like it's time to like to be a brotherhood, you know, and I'm, so like I don't know. I just don't get that kind of selfish attitude of not lifting other bands up with you and um Especially we've been so fucking fortunate. Like we never saw this band getting to this level. You know what I mean? So I try to use my powers for good, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, we, that... oh, go ahead. we really appreciated getting to tour with you guys. We were so excited about it. And I had a, a specific memory of that show at the Palladium, I think. Is that what it's called? In yep. uh, Worcester, right? Worcester. Worcester. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so we, 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 we were all like, I mean, it's like our second tour of all time. And, you know, the bloodletting tour was like, you know, 100 people was like a great night. You know, that's like how it goes, you know, um, or whatever, you know, something like that. It depends if we're in L.A. or not. But at the Palladium, there were those rooms, like the green rooms, like we go up like all these stories, like way up, like three, four stories. Okay, we're way up there and all this, you know, and we're like getting ready to go. And we just hear this like roaring crowd, like, raw, raw. <laughs> like we we're just like, this is one of the first shows. I mean, in my memory of the tour and I'm uh, just like. It's like Lord of the Rings. It's like Mordor. <laughs> we're like, oh shit. We were so nervous, dude. And it was just, and we're like walking out on the stage, just like, oh, like this huge crowd. And we're just like, okay, like, you know, like playing decrepit. I was just like totally nervous, but like super adrenaline and like so honored to just have to like stop. Oh man, the fucking, yeah. the whole <laughs> nation was ready for the decrepit birth, man. Like it was, it was time, dude. Like, you guys yeah. had so much momentum and um you know i was like let's do it let's freaking like the sickest brutal death metal band going and put them on the bill and it was awesome it worked perfectly it was amazing you know you guys brought tons of people out and um yeah it was just it was great uh but you also came from odious too right casey before uh, yeah yeah so I'm like the original, remaining original Odious. We, we like started that in 2000 with Dan and David. And Dan was in Decrepit. He was the guitarist. And then Joel joined Odious in 2004, I think. Something like that, yeah. And then Anthony in 2005, I think. I'm the first yeah. and only yeah. front man of that band. What's yeah. <laughs> Dude, Carnivorous was dope too. Dan, Dan was in that, right? Yep. That was me and Dan. Fucking yeah, Dan 18, Kenny. 19... Yeah. 
years old in Pacifica, California, fucking playing in his garage, literally a 10 minute walk from where I'm at right now. I think I would actually was... walk home from that house to this house. Cause I, I would, I was in this house until I was like 26 and uh, yeah, dude, it was, it was the perfect walk home from a party, dude. You just, <laughs> I, I didn't have to drive anywhere. It was literally like 10. I just had to fucking walk 10 minutes and you could hear the fucking ocean going the whole time. You're just like, yeah, dude, this is where I fucking live. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, dude, death metal in Dan's garage, dude, and and we would fuck. I had I had a Boss 808 uh, fucking drum machine. He had his guitar, 15 watt amp. I was playing that shit. I, I was playing the drums through a fucking bass combo, SW I think was the brand. And dude, we were just fucking as fast as we can. Fucking as soon as I figure out, I could do a fucking bomb blast, double bass blast. I was just like, dude, we're in dude. It, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was totally just the fucking, the basic bones, you know, of fucking blast beat to fucking break down to fucking thrash to fucking this, to fucking that. And then, and then, uh, yeah, it got to the point where we were friends with severed and, we just asked we got to the point where we're like let's make this human dude asked troy and troy's like yeah dude i'm in and we just fucking started playing death metal with fucking severed savior's drummer dude it literally oh, was awesome. like yeah. it was fucking it was it was pretty crazy to think like oh shit we just landed troy fullerton you know but yeah it was just one of those stepping stones that got us got me to the carnivorous meeting these odious dudes and now i'm i'm at home you know, in this band, this is my home. Then once he met guys, us, I love you guys so much. He, he got famous <laughs> when he met us, and then now he's famous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so famous, dude. We all we, we, we all bought mansions, and you know, it's the rest is history. We all got a pair of tennis shoes yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. Big Willow Tip money, man. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we almost signed to Willow Tip like right before um, Metal oh, yeah? Blade. They were the only label. Like we got twenty eight rejection letters. No shit. Then an offer from Willow Tip, and then an wait, offer from Metal Blade. Wait, sorry, for, you you made a demo or like when was this? Um, it was we had an EP out on this like shot label, um, Love hmm. Lost, and then we got John on guitar the first time we had a lead player. So we yeah. wrote a few songs. They had leads, so we made a demo. So it was like a three song demo of songs that would be on Unhallowed, plus like the yeah. EP. The EP had um. Close Casket, Requiem, and um, Blackest Incarnation. So we sent, like, we wrote, like, you know, we are so cool. We are trying to tour. <laughs> we're going to do it whether you help us or not because we're so fucking driven, man. We played shows with Creationist Crucifixion, blah, 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 blah. Hey. You know, like, just a yeah. rap sheet like jerking yourself off basically mm -hmm. and um you know we had some review snippets from like the ep and stuff and i sent it to every fucking label out there like super death metal labels to a bit more hardcore adjacent and, like everything in between pretty much like from the big guns to like the small and uh yeah slowly the rejections were trickling in you know but uh, yeah, we were talking to Jason from Willow Tip. He was really stoked. He was really nice. Um, but of course, when Metal Blade called, we were just like, "Dude, I'm sorry. You understand, you know? Like, we have to go do it's this." It's so wild to me, though. It's just like it it, it 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 makes you realize, like, yeah, that's why Metal Blade is the number one metal label on the planet because 28 people rejected this band, and now they're fucking Black Dahlia Murder. You know, it's like. It's, why why what was it that didn't click with those 28 fucking you know rejection um, letters uh, sometimes they would say like it's not original enough you know like and um you know we've i i i've never claimed that what we're doing is like reinventing the wheel or anything like that it's I definitely don't think a, any a of melting, us are yeah, yeah yeah you know it's a melting pot of sounds that we like basically you cool. know but like relapse said maybe it was a little too generic um we really wanted a relapse you know like relapse was left the kings around that time and um we did get them to admit they were sorry they didn't sign us and that was good enough for me 
<laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, it just goes to show you, like, it's all about the right opportunity and the right, like, the reason we're still here is just making the right choices, you know, hopefully, like, uh, who to tour with, what to do with our money, blah, 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 blah. Um, we've just been very smart and that's all on Brian, dude. Brian is, you know, where I am the face of the band out doing interviews and crap. He's the, the, the number crunching kind of like last word, like when shit hits a fan, he's the guy in your band you turn to and go, so what are we going to do? You know, like, <laughs> how bad is it? <laughs> he's the quant. Is that the right <laughs> term for that? Yeah. <laughs> this is the professor speaking. Yeah. The professor. <laughs> um, can I hit you another question from uh, some guy named Pat Kenny? Oh, oh some just guy. Some yeah. guy. Just some yeah. guy. Just some guy. <laughs> he was at uh, my shop yesterday. <laughs> um, just some you guy. Could, yeah, if you could, oh, he was. Uh, if you could orchestrate a metal band and you got to pick all of the members, living or dead, who would you pick? That's his first question. Mm. I, I don't think the he means like you're in the band. I think he means like creative. Okay, good. I don't want to be yeah. in the band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just put together a super group. That's what I was yeah. like. What's my voice not going to ruin? Like, <laughs> Um, I don't, I mean, it's got to have some cell phone members in it. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Fuck we'll, yeah. we'll tap bones, Doug bone Let's... on the drums, man. He'll, he'll come back. Yeah. Some, some fancy hi-hat funky stuff. Hell um, yeah. let's put Murray on bass, man. What's up? The oh. Jedi Shout out. grind. The Jedi Murray grind, Fitzpatrick. Man. I know he's, he's watching right now. Cheers, brother. I haven't seen that fucker in a minute, dude, but I remember him telling me like, Oh, yeah, you know, I, I work for YouTube. I'm like, yeah, what's that? He's like, it's going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's, he's the only dude that I've ever known. He's like, check my business card out. One side was YouTube, and then you flip it over, and the back side was Google. And you're like, I work yeah. for both companies, bro. I'm dipping. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, shit. Who, who do I want in my super band? Got to put Diego in there, man. He's got those Dude. the never ending labyrinth riffs, you know? Yep. Um gotta have two guitars, you know. Um who would work well with Diego. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. We Ron from Malignancy, he's got that kind of like endless stream of uh riff styling going on. Um, that's one of those dudes that, that doesn't know anything about music. Like, like <laughs> opposite him is Mike Heller at the drum kit, who knows everything about music. Yeah. And then him, he's just like, "All right, here's my weird riffs. Like, let's do it." You know? And like, it's amazing. It's fucking awesome. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So I'll put Ron in there. We'll get get Ron up in there. Um, who's gonna sing? Somebody really nasty. <laughs> <laughs> somebody that can do like all those predator sounds and shit like the, the um oh yeah the um, heinous killings guy or something uh, <laughs> like like those tongue trills and stuff, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> that's just awesome um paulo from um um no, no um to think of like his most prominent shit that you guys would know ass brain <laughs> brand ass <laughs> oh brain ass <laughs> what was the other one what was the other one it was brain ass and then what was burger the kill burger, burger kill, kill. <laughs> <laughs> cattle decapitation dude it's the same thing they said let's take cattle decapitation and fucking trans burger kill dead meat baby <laughs> Um, shit. Who's sick as fuck? You are, dude. No, maybe I gotta front many... it now. Me yeah. with a, right. a, a brutal death metal band would be the worst idea ever. Like, I can't do a guttural, like an actual guttural, to save my life. You know, like. <laughs> but um, um, do you have some nice lows, dude? What are you talking about, dude? You yeah, but be... like in the grand scheme of things, in the in the brutal death metal spectrum, it's not that low. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, he's like I a mean, brutal death metal. Like Trevor's a brutal death metal like nerd. Like he knows everything. Like, like you don't knowing, cup, like, you, you know don't cup the mic though, right? So maybe if he, maybe if Trevor cupped the mic, he could do the. Um, maybe I'll put a. Uh, I'll put Jared from Archaic on, dude. He's just what's up? Uh, uh, shout I'm, out, I'm going, dude! I'm going to a barbecue at his house tomorrow. Oh, uh, dude, dude he's, he's he's filthy, man. His voice is disgusting. He's fucking dude. sick, dude. Oh yeah. I fucking love Jared, dude. I had so much fun with him too on that severed tour. That guy, the uh, the archa- all the archaic dudes, dude, will always have a special place in my heart. Cheers, dudes. Yeah, but, that's yeah. a sick band lineup right there. It is just at just that time fresh. for sure, dude. Alex what? Ben on drums, dude. What the fuck? Oh uh, yeah, he's disgusting. At nineteen, we had to sneak him into venues because he couldn't even fucking. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wasn't even of age, you know. He's the he sweetest, to... sweetest drummer I think on planet Earth, probably right. <laughs> I think sweetest probably... and and in in his uh, demeanor and in the way he plays, dude. He's sweet, yeah, dude. I've got to do That's some honestly awesome him. because, dude, there are so many. When you get into the super talented end of brutal death metal and extreme metal, like there's a lot of psycho drummers, dude. You know what totally. I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, on, a we're, on a, we're on an episode with two of them, dude. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of <laughs> so, a lot of egomaniac drummers, dude. <laughs> so so my mic was in muted. a good way. <laughs> <laughs> you guys so, can hear me now, right? Oh, yes. totally. hey, sorry, hey, sorry. Yeah. I had my mic on mute. I didn't. I was like talking. My arms. Were I know. Raging. I saw your like, mouth flapping. I was I'm like, like dude, dude. I'm like, no one's listening to me, dude. Come on, man. I think it's awesome points. I thought you were just like. I thought you were like just. Uh, a visual. Reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 oh shit! I'm on mute. Oh shit! Yeah. I thought that there was a, a wasp in your. <laughs> yeah. The audio listeners, Casey's been trying yeah, yeah. to talk to us for a couple minutes, and I guess he. <laughs> Had it on. I just threw you a text, dog. <laughs> probably just getting I know. I saw it. It's cool. No, I, yeah. But I was going to say, like, Trevor, like, dude, I think your vocals are, like, you know, so sick and, like, like over the place. Like, but I think, like, your lows are, like, especially really good, you know? So, I don't oh, know. Thanks. I, th- I think you could do I don't that. know what I'm doing. Oh, I feel like I'm yeah. kind of just in my own lane with it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, um, influence-wise, it's a lot of carcass and the kind of like that mm-hmm. low you know like brutal truth kind sure of yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah dude yeah but, speaking um, my language there's so many like i don't know like i feel like a lot of why i'm here is because i'm um a smooth talker i guess <laughs> <laughs> i've got the charisma <laughs> yeah now you dude, I- I'm the, gonna steal the, like a thousand of your saying. Uh, the stone is an old wizard. Like that's that's stone been going. Is an old for, wizard yeah, is sticking years with me after this well, episode, dude. Speaking of that, do you remember what your nickname was for me on tour? <sighs> trying, no, trying dude, I don't. I totally dig don't. on it. You used to call me old man. What up, old man? <laughs> Everything's yeah. old. Everything's yeah. old. Old wizard, old, old man. <laughs> well, it's, it's because I I I wore this like sweater all the time, and I was always like tired or something I'm like yeah you know and trevor's like oh what's up old man <laughs> like, it, was, it was great dude, you guys were um riding around in like a weird truck was that yeah you know truck? there is still some truth to that yeah, yeah there was an, a ford f-150 um, that had um you know, no insulation obviously it just had a bed back there we had the you know the the bench seat was for someone and then we had, you know, passenger driver. So two people were in the back and fucking because it was literally one of the cold of the truck. Yeah, it was one of the coldest winters in like 40 years or something like that. I remember like, oh, God, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was the back right there. Bed with the camper shell, dude. And you guys had you guys blew a heater core in the middle of winter. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. On one of the up. worst yeah. cars to blow a heater core. That's like a <laughs> that's that's like iPod that's right like there. like a sixteen hour oh, job yeah. or something like that. Dude. I got I got jacked, but it's all good. You guys had to get uh, uh portable heaters, right? Just oh, that fire. thing, yeah. God. Lost the fender there. Oh yeah, we had to put the <laughs> chains, chains on, on the motherfucking shit. trailer. Oh, that's dude. the worst. It was anyway. trial by fire for us for sure. It was all the things that could have gone wrong went wrong twice basically <laughs> <laughs> like, just doubled up on that you know it was fucking insane but it was you know it like what you said when you were talking about like the earlier tours it was it was you know i look back on it's the oh shit it was literally <laughs> yo do you the, have a frozen <laughs> bug right <there>? yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's all that's from the last night. I was just partying way too hard. I forgot to wipe my nose. That's hands. like the you just what'd you say? The double of everything gone wrong. That's double of not giving a fuck after all those things, dude. <laughs> yeah, that was actually the that was in Rochester before I even met up before we met you guys. We basically were at this guy's house. This guy named Yeti that was like seven foot fucking nine. Well, and like, yeah. Like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, stood in his I house. I hope his like, name is Yeti, dude. Oh, dude. This guy yeah, was people fucking... named Yeti are fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that's, a oh, that's when I had that weird ass jacket that I got at the uh, thrift store. <laughs> I don't know. My shorts are pretty ill right there. I don't know. Like, yeah, my style back then, I look at those. I was, I was literally wearing shorts that were like almost to my ankles. It almost seems like I was, I don't know how I thought that was a good move. I don't, I don't know. Well, I I definitely like had pants. some some facial hair issues back then. When I see the old <laughs> pictures, I'm like, "What? What's going on?" Didn't you couldn't didn't ask Dad what to do? <laughs> <laughs> dad didn't teach me how to shave, dude. I was like, "Mom, fuck the mailman," because my dad had a big old beard, and fucking, <laughs> I was like, all this like fucking patched up shit. Like it didn't make any sense at all. Uh, oh yeah. fuck yeah! Oh uh, what? Where's this oratory shirt on? Shows. Yeah. Yeah. See, I have the. Uh, orgasm through diarrhea okay. what the fuck is that called <laughs> that's, oh, that's yeah. my yeah. favorite goratory though that's the one uh, uh yeah and sexual intercourse no, yeah, that, that was no the that's, first the, record. that's the first one yeah i know what you're talking about <laughs> orgasm uh, you probably got it right <laughs> orgasm through diarrhea like and i remember we played sense. a we, we played a show in texas and the devourment guys were there and you had this fucking shirt that they gave you that was like I was like worried about you walking on stage with it. I orgasm, it orgasm induced diarrhea. Oh yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. But you had this Gorgasm shirt that's just all like fucking. It would not fly in twenty twenty one. Oh yeah, dude, for sure. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, that empowerment it. shirt was like. Oh man, I can't remember, but it was it was not very nice to the females out there. <laughs> dude, I, I have a you. shirt. I have a shirt that I'm so embarrassed to have right now, dude. And it, I never wore it. I literally bought it at Maryland Desk Fest. I've had it for fucking 17 years. Never wore it once, dude. I think I need to sell it on eBay because it's an anal blast t-shirt. <laughs> uh, I was gonna ask who what fucked up band it was. My it was guess an was an anal blast be- t-shirt, so it's the normal anal blast fucking logo the butthole or whatever but on the back i'm i'm sorry to all the females that i love in the door um treating cunts like whores since 1994 that's what yeah, they're definitely, definitely charmers those guys and <laughs> i and as, a, as an 18 year old man i'm like dude that's a fucking sick shirt dude I'm fucking <laughs> buy that i'll fucking take that i'll take this and then it's, it's like wait what am i doing <laughs> I'm not going to be able to wear now. this in any any situation <laughs> unless I wear a jacket over it and maybe open it That's up. The best. Like, oh, at least I'll show you the butthole. You know, <laughs> when you, you buy a shirt thinking it's going to be like the sickest fucking thing, then at time it, the, the time comes to put it on. Like it shows yeah. up, you're like, you're all now it's now it's time fucking do or die. You got to put it on now, and you're like holding it, and you're like shit. Like, and you know what's funny is that as a, as a guy, I had a cradle of filth shirt. I had the cradle of filth, the famous cradle of filth shirt the nun masturbating on the front and on the back says jesus christ is a cunt i wore that in public and was stoked on that but for some reason saying treating cunts like horror since 1994 on the back <laughs> was too much for me you know like a nun can be masturbating on my on the front of my body but i i, I can't treat cunts like horrors dude nah I, yeah. <laughs> it I, doesn't make sense at all it doesn't make sense at all but for some reason that saying was like oh dude i can't wear it dude jesus, yeah, christ, can be a jesus, <laughs> christ, can, jesus christ could always be a cunt but, uh, i guess it, all right too much in the weeds sorry one, one more fan question also from pat kenny <laughs> he has two <laughs> questions i'm like dude we got so many questions and just all of them are from Pat. <laughs> no this is a. Uh, this is actually a good one for Trevor. What's the best year for death metal releases? Oh, damn. That's hard. That's really hard. I think you kind of already answered, answered it, dude. 95. Well, it depends dude. on what you're talking about. Like, I don't know if you, if you're talking about like the best year for brutal death metal, you know, you'd say something like, 2003 or two or i don't know you know but um i don't know maybe like 91 came out in 91 
mental funeral effigy right is that yeah. blessed are the sick also yeah i'll oh, do that's that might be my favorite well i already said that pearson within is my favorite so i can't back down now but yeah blessed are the sick is another record when i listen to it i go is this the best stuff metal record of all time like every time i listen to it i ask myself that i think yeah. the suffo morbid combo is more uh influential than i know that cannibal is one of those bands too that all it is like in the formative in uh introduction or whatever for a lot of people but i do th- believe that like the combo of suffo and morbid was what solidified it with me because morbid gives you this like satanic more s- traditional death metal and then suffo's got this more you know swagger hardcore yeah, like progressed, like and not really progressed, but just like evolved style. That like, yeah, it, yeah. it's not as straight and deicide too, kind of in that realm, mm-hmm. you know. That like something about the East Coast at that oh, time, yeah. dude. It's, that's what it is. Like that that coast for some reason, and now it's moved out to this coast. Oh, I want to, I want to think that it did. Yeah. <laughs> well, TP <laughs> ninety one. <laughs> Okay, TBT that's the answer. M. That's my that's my uh, yeah a hollowed year. Yeah, totally. uh, or an unhollowed year. So guys, uh, well, Trevor, yeah. so how you how you feeling? You're thanks so much for coming and blessing us with your fucking knowledge and stories and wisdom, and it's been super cool getting oh, to meet you, guys. Well, thanks for having <laughs> me, dude. It's fun. I was looking forward to it tremendously, and uh, it's been a blast. Yeah, have me back man. have me back sometime i would love to oh totally dude yeah um love to there is there a casey story about that black dahlia tour or is that for another episode or for a never episode which story the 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 ending the that the way you escaped from the tour or is that a different tour oh that remember? was no that was yeah i got all sick that was a bummer like swine flu and then we tried to come back on and yeah and then like the weather stuff and all that yeah but I, yeah, the, I was... the end of the tour was weird. It kind of dissolved. Like, uh, yeah, you guys couldn't catch back up, and then like yeah. three inches of blood kind of bailed when it got like super wintry and stuff on the uh, yeah. around Seattle and shit like that. Because they were so close to Vancouver, they were like, uh, "Sorry, guys." <laughs> you know, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like the tour was extremely fucking challenging at that point, and the travel was insane and. Um, you know, I don't blame him or you guys, you know, I was whatever. talking to, uh, to <laughs> Rutan when we were stuck at a truck stop in uh, Wyoming and uh, cause they were like, well, roads are closed and they're like, dude, yeah, they're closed, but just go around the closed part. <laughs> what, like there was like these two <laughs> things that came down as well. You just fucking weave in between them and get the fuck out. Like that's basically what they, what they did. They were just like, yeah, we just drove around it. And I was like, ah, but like, I remember we were stuck at that truck stop for like three or four days or two or three days or something. And, um, Wyoming stuck and there was like literally in Wyoming and little America truck stop and there was literally I'm not even kidding you like when they open they're like there's word you know I'm sleep I'm sleeping in a cafe and there's a word that stuff's going to reopen and we all get in the van we're all stoked and uh we're, we start to get back on and then um shit's moving we're like fuck yeah here we go and then it stops probably I want to say 30 minutes into the slow crawl <sighs> and we just stop and they're like and a guy comes up to our window. He's all, "Hey, you guys might be here for a couple days." What? <laughs> oh, oh, that's when you guys called me, dude. Yeah, I was like, "What the fuck?" A couple days. I was like, "Because they were yeah, saying like, I, we were basically my feet were like frozen, well, yeah, and they, wet, and like there was no no heater, there was nothing." And I was like, "Dude, am I gonna? Is this where I? Is this where it ends? Am I gonna survive?" <laughs> <laughs> well, they laughed at us, and we had like no snow tires or anything. And they're just they're like, "You're from California. We're like in shorts. <laughs> we're like in a snowstorm. You know, we're like." And they're like, "Oh, like." And the guy just laughed at us, and, and he was like, "Uh, well, if you start to freeze, just call nine one one." Like that's what they said. Freeze. Jesus, yeah. they told dude. us. We were like, and "What?" We were, like, I know we were like in uh, California, instantly like freaked out because we don't know yeah. what the fuck we're what we're getting ourselves into. And I remember they finally yeah. reopened, probably about thirteen hours later. And um, we start driving, and then we understood why the fucking roads were closed. Like, that was the apocalypse. That was, like, the darkest, like, clouds, like, purple clouds with, like, 
and this fucking wind that was coming through and just like semis just going like i don't give a fuck and just like blowing by <laughs> us and like knocking us off the road and like us <laughs> like, like yeah, yeah those yeah. kind of motherfuckers those truck drivers got like so much more respect for me on how they drive after that tour i was like those guys didn't give a fuck and we thought we were dead meat we thought we were like not going to survive that yeah like, oh. and you're laying I, in the bed of a truck dude in the fucking with a camper shell over you and i'm oh, like it was a sick, it was a fun tour it was a good time like i'm oh the tour if, was if it ends now yeah. if it ends now it's all good did you were you in a sleeping bag <laughs> Oh yeah, I was wrapped up like in a cocoon, and yeah. my feet were somehow wet, and the the bag was wet, and it was just oh, like I thought, it, God, I thought I was gonna so die. So shot, dude. I'm yeah, so yeah. sorry. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. Well, that no, no. <laughs> that tour was one of the best times of our lives for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, was. out of all the tours we did after that, I still like look back on that one as like my favorite. It turned into work after awesome. that. It you know, turned into like for... work and like not. Yeah. I mean, I still loved all the time. You know, all the summer slaughters and so it was so so much fun. Um, yeah, but. But getting a chance to be um, going on a, you know, a, a bloodletting first and then going on a fucking like everything sold out to her was like, yeah, a complete. And, and I, actually, I remember I don't know if you remember this, uh, Trevor, in the San Francisco, I was on the way to go get um, my girlfriend was driving me to the show and I got in this gnarly car accident on the way in, to the show. She like was driving all of a sudden hydroplane slammed into a wall at 60 miles an hour boom airbags all the shit her fucking head's cut open and i'm almost like what the fuck like this is crazy i'm fine my neck's all fucked up and i'm like and i remember uh you know it was super torrential rains and um the ambulance comes and then they just grab my they grab my neck and they're all does this hurt and it just hurts so fucking bad and i was like no it's Everything's oh good. my god <laughs> i was like it's all good and then dan um our guitar player came with his girlfriend and swooped behind and picked me up and my girlfriend at the time was like just go play because slims and it was sold out it's like my yeah. my dream show like uh -huh. that's like what i've been waiting to do my whole life like this was the one show the whole tour that i cared about and she's all no 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 just go go and i showed up there and i was just like stiff as a board and brian's all like here's this extra strength tylenol uh, here you go. it just gave me some like random pills and i took it and i was like i feel great this is awesome and i went up there and i fucking i fucking played like nothing ever happened and uh i remember and then, Chase... and then he had to be weaned off heroin six years later. <laughs> i remember we had like friends backstage we had murray backstage we had chase backstage chase started hitting your guys's bottles a little too hard and uh, I remember oh, you guys were playing. Yeah, dude. You guys were playing, and then um, he was just like, he was sitting there going, "Yeah, dude, totally," and just like chucking like your full like half the bottles against the wall and all over your guys' shit. Oh, and I was like, that. "What the fuck are you doing?" Like, he's just uh, yeah, out. I I remember, I remember. Yeah, and then like you guys <laughs> brought me out. Like I remember you guys were um just loading up and getting all your stuff together. You're like, Joel, come out here because I was kind of in charge of those guys. Not and, prime, uh, not prime. Yeah, and then you guys were like, "What the fuck's going on?" What the hell? I'm like, dude. Because you guys were about to bring animosity on the next tour. And that was uh -huh. like, oh, and you guys shit. were like, what the fuck should we do? Like, blah, blah, Like, He's doing this. Like, what the fuck? And I'm like, dude, he's fine. He just blacked out. He like, just parties. <laughs> yeah, he was ripping down artwork in the backstage and throwing it. <laughs> like, are you, are and I was like, about, wait, Gene Hoagland's Chase. back there. Like, are we I'm talking like, about oh Chase? Yeah, I drove him home, dude. Actually, <laughs> you know what's funny is that uh, my wife drove all of us home. All of us. We, we got pulled over that night, dude. Oh, and she got pulled right. over by a cop and had all of us in the car like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just corpses. <laughs> and she's just like, yeah, I'm just uh, getting these guys home. And she got let, let off. But it's just like funny that that was one of those nights where I was I was fucking almost blacked out, dude. Yeah, I'm yeah, telling yeah. Gene Hogan, like, dude, fucking individual plot piles is fucking... <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. I definitely punished the fuck out of Steve DiGiorgio at this one time, and it might have been that time. <laughs> it was that same night, though. Now that I'm totally, you guys, you're bringing this up. You were playing that night, and that was, I that was the, probably the last time that I had seen you in person, Trevor. I don't think that was the, any other right. time after that. Yeah, I re yeah, I remember one time you were. I got a uh, big hug. I got a big. You hug were three sheets the, to the wind. I was Kwan. definitely three sheets. <laughs> But I, I still that. got a big hug from you that night, so I was like, "All yeah. right." Dude. I'll still just never forget you, fucking... like, like fucking all Black Dolly are bringing me to trial. I'm like standing at, at the only sole person in front of the stage, and it's it's Trevor, Brian, everyone, just going like, 
what the fuck's going on back there, Joel? What's going on? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, dude, we, we brought a, like, a I don't know. we brought a human tornado back there. And then like we went the on tour people. with yeah. animosity and I saw him like cut loose a couple times. Like I remember him like dancing on a, a pool table and shit, <laughs> like at some <laughs> venue and stuff. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is out Chase, of all the people man, you think that it. Frank would be the would be the guy, but yeah, Chase mm-hmm. was the guy that night. Chase did get yeah. wild. Shout out to Chase, dude. <laughs> dude, toured with Animosity without Naveen, man. Oh, that's right. Uh, they practiced at her house for that uh, Brett guy, right? Was it Brett? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, that was... It's just so weird to imagine even because it doesn't make like, any sense. Such a was part it of it, you know? Brett Braddorf? Brett? Or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. okay. From the faceless yeah. guy? That's yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I well, think we should probably wrap this shit well, up. I was going to, I wanted to ask really fast what you guys think are just real fast, dude. I, cause I, I spent so much time listening to all of you, like all nine albums, you know, and I got super nerdy, dude. And like, I love all of them. Like they're all different and rad, you know? Oh, thanks man. And, uh, You're making me blush. Oh dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I got super nerdy, dude. I mean, I like wrote shit out. Check that Ooh, out dude. Man. Yeah. yeah. So, because I was just like, you know, man, I respect you a lot. And I, I, I've known your music for so long, but I haven't like honestly dived into every single album over, over the last few years. I've been, you know, doing all kinds of different stuff. Oh, dude, and, we've been cranking them out. Yeah. Man. <laughs> you guys have been fucking busy, man. Every two Healing caps. Yeah, no, for sure. It's fucking dope. And uh, like, I just, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to listen to, obviously Nocturnal was a big album for us because we toured with you guys on that. And that's very nostalgic and it's a great album as well. So that was like my top album for so long. Of course, on Hollow, I mean, they're all super amazing. It doesn't, every single album is really fucking good. But uh, I wanted to see, do, do any of you guys have a favorite album? I think for me, I mean, I love the new one so much. I think Nightbringers might be like my favorite, dude. I like the but, Abysmal album a lot. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah, they're all oh, thanks, so man. good awesome. though. And I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in a different one. Miasma is my oh yeah, my favorite. so good. Yeah, with Zach on it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I know that's early in the career. I'm not trying to make that a, a you know. Nah, dude, I, I get it. That man. one's really good. I'm in dude, place. It's just fucking. You know when old. that one one or two albums just make that fucking they burn it gets burned and you get branded by it miasma and unhallowed were one of those that will never i'll i'll take that to the grave dude like but have you heard up. all have you heard all nine though i've uh, and you're putting me on the spot i have not no that's okay and, then. And, i had what a dickhead right. you gotta do your <laughs> and i don't want to be an i do <laughs> oh, and i'm sorry if that makes me no sound i don't like care a no no no, no. <laughs> i'm just saying they have so much good material that it takes time it's oh, like i know and it's and, awesome it's fucking and dope. i love to have the time that's the yeah. thing it's the time dude yeah like yeah, you got three kids. I can, we all have real life. Off, yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, I'm trying to instill, I know, I know. I'm instill some kind of memory in these three children. And I'm like, I have zero time for like, if I try and put on headphones in, I'm taking a shit. I got headphones and I'm hearing <laughs> on the door the whole time. I'm, I'm like, I just, I just want to enjoy this breakdown. Please. <laughs> I can't, yeah, even, you know, you can, I, can I have one slam? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, right? Yeah, that's like, that's my life right now. It's like these, well, these, these episodes are actually my like little break away from that. And it's not that I'm like, I need a vacation from that, but it's like, it's nice to bro down with you guys and being able to meet and see new people that I haven't seen in a long time. Trevor, you're one of them. And, and it's just, this is, this is a really cool thing for us. Yeah, to, I did have this little window we love you trevor love yeah, you guys man. Man. always have <laughs> oh, i love you that's right most definitely dude and <laughs> and all obviously your time change is uh you're you're putting in you're putting more uh of your life of this day into this episode than we are it's only 10 not o'clock necessarily here. like i said i you know i like to stay up really late i like the idea of the world being asleep and i can just do whatever i want yeah he's nocturnal dude it's like that mike tyson feeling he's a, he's a nightbringer. nightbringer mike tyson's like i run at 2 a.m yeah. because i know my opponent's sleeping <laughs> yeah <laughs> i see and yeah. then i sleep as late as i can 
So like it's my middle finger to the real world. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, dude. That's right. Sleep five. <laughs> dude. <laughs> totally makes sense. And I love that yeah. explanation, dude. And that's yeah, great. Yeah. Dude. It's like you're taking full control, dude. Well, like you guys have like got adult lives and shit now. Like I'm know, technically dude. an adult, but I've been touring since you saw me last. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. Totally. I'm I have arrested development at like mm-hmm. 16, did I swear? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. And if I probably didn't start making kids as early as I did, and maybe I would make be in kids. The same boat. <laughs> making <laughs> if I didn't start making humans at the earliest <laughs> of I, yeah, times, I'd probably yeah. be doing the same thing. Yeah. You make them. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got th- I got a 3D printer in my fucking Johnson, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, all right, all right. Let's smoke, let's uh, that sounds up. like a, a good all right point dude, yeah that's right a good like one that. all right <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, guys, love, hey. I love all you guys dude i love i love that we did this this is great dude trevor thank you so much we already said it but thank you for your time no problem, dude. Dude. You know, the, we didn't even say anything about plugs you know i we we're so unprofessional with that shit dude and if, so when hair, I say we, I mean, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think people know where to go yeah google google t- use google <laughs> tbdm and it's not technical brutal death metal it's the black dolly murder you know yeah oh cool <laughs> oh sick dude <laughs> thanks guys for fucking laughing at my joke dude all right uh calidath.com <laughs> calidath.com uh fucking joseph anything new over there i'm sorry oh I'm dude you cut that out dude no no no, no. it's <laughs> all right my but, shame is exposed yeah no sorry. no i'm not shaming you at all i'm not fucking <laughs> trying to uh, it's all uh, me yeah put some fucking fire under your ass i'm just saying calideath.com's the the hub you know we never plug our email dude we got an email address what is it caldpodcast at gmail.com you we have an email some... a fan mail we got one yeah yeah we shout out to zeke is up. it zeke I think it was it. Yeah, dude. Uh, he he says he went to the pound a lot, 20, 2004 to eight, and he said Anthony spit on him once. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, I, don't, I, I don't spit on people, dude. I, I really don't. No, but I, shout out to Zeke. We, we got your email. I'm going to write you back, though, for sure, if you're listening. Okay. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's cool, dude. So we got an actual email. We got that's one it. email, yeah. We got lots of comments, though. We're We're stoked on the comments, for sure, so. Oh, yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. Thanks again, right. Trevor. Trevor. Yeah, okay, yeah, what else? Thanks, hit buddy. those socials. Hit the, you know, Most subscribe. All, <laughs> tell all your friends, all that shit, you know? All right. Fuck yeah. Bye. Trevor, thank you again, dude. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. We'll have oh, a little yeah. wrap up, a couple minutes. But yeah, dude, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> awesome. Peace.